you know, fashionably late isn't right. necessarily <laughs> a bad thing. I am uh, here for this bop. This music is actually growing on me. Good <laughs> picture, <laughs> my friend. You uh, uh, you heard the voice of uh, our our very own Alex Thomas, who is uh, actually joining us on the actual play, and uh, you picked the music today for this actual play live stream with GM Steve Kenson, and uh, we've got a, a star-studded cast of patrons from the m m Patreon. And for folks who are not familiar, what is wrong with you? Um, uh, it can be remedied by going to patreon.com slash mutants, A-N-D, masterminds, and like, for as low as like three bucks, you can get in on some pretty awesome stuff like this particular event. Um, we do what? Uh, are, they, are they monthly live plays? Actual plays? Yeah, monthly. That's right. Yeah, and we cycle through. Uh, this time around, it's Steve Kenson, and you've mm -hmm. got you have you have brought a little bit of Gen Con uh, of of a sort uh, to the big screen. Well, I have. I brought out. We're going to have a little experience of some summer convention excitement, uh, along with some uh, familiar yet different for mutants and masterminds heroes. I like it. I like it. Well, I'm really excited about the folks that we've got joining us today. Because look at this beautiful crew. Hello, friends. Um, listen to this. We have got Ian Welts with us, celebrating two years as a patron. We've got Maximus JD, who is seven months as a patron. I feel like you, you've been here for longer than that. Uh, maybe just seems like longer, but no. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we've also got Apook. Now, Apook, in addition to being a community leader, two years as a patron. Um, that is phenomenal. Um, and, of course, we have Alex Thomas, uh, who's a developer for the project. Hades apologist, of course. As mm -hmm. he Doesn't you apologize for. <laughs> Man's just doing his job. That's right. That's right. Has there ever and been then, a zombie apocalypse? You're welcome. No, actually, now that you mention it, not not from lack of trying, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> then we have RC. RC, you are the GM for uh, the Masks and Mayhem podcast. You've been a patron for a year. Again, somebody who I might feel like feel like we haven't done an M and M thing without you being right at the center of it. And then, of course, we've got the GM, um, whom I like to call Big Papa Hero. Steve Kinson as the GM, and uh, you know, and I'm here hanging around in the background. I'm near somebody who was in Troy. Um, thank you all for joining today. And um, Steve, you've got some pretty phenomenal stuff planned. I know because I'm looking at the map. Uh, right, but it's uh, open. yeah, right. Um, I'm going to reduce the sound of this phenomenal music, and then I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm gonna mute my microphone and uh, and then heckle you via text. Excellent. All right. So welcome everybody. Uh, we are playing on uh, Roll Twenty uh, today with the assistance of our very finely crafted Mutants and Masterminds character sheet uh, and uh, some of our very own uh, Roll20 resources, uh, including the map uh, that you will see today. Um, just quickly, uh, for folks who are uh, new or unfamiliar uh, with the experience, uh, the Roll20 character sheet is pretty uh, reasonably automated. Uh, so uh, the general guideline is if you click on it, uh, it will pretty much roll it <laughs> um, for the most part. Uh, that is particularly true of uh, things like your attacks um, that are listed on your uh, character sheet. Your initiative, which you'll see up in the upper right corner there by the D20. Uh, your defenses over on the uh, upper left there. Uh, and, of course, your various skills and the like. Uh, 
naturally, yeah, there is an example in play. Uh, that's um, Saguaro throwing up an example, a description of one of his uh, advantages. You can uh, click on a uh, particular attack. For example, there's Arctic Fire's Fire Blast. Um, and in the case of attacks like this, it shows in the first the uh, attack value, which is pretty bad uh, and would probably miss. Um, and then the uh, DC uh, for uh, the resistance check uh, for that. Uh, all right. So the one thing that I always, always, always remind folks of on Roll20 is when you roll for initiative, please make sure that your character's token is selected. Uh, that you have clicked on their token uh, and it is active. That way, when you roll initiative, it will send your initiative automatically to the turn tracker uh, and I will more easily be able to keep track of it rather than having to add it in manually, uh, which I will do, but I will probably make fun of you if that has to happen. Hey, Steve, I wanted to say it looks like uh, Gerald may not have access to their character sheet. Okay, I, have, I will make sure that Gerald has access. Uh, and you should be set now, Gerald. Good? It's loading, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got it. Awesome. Um, I know that you all have varying levels of familiarity with mutants and masterminds. So um, I will say that the character sheets are going to do a lot of the heavy lifting uh, as far as this goes. Um, and I will give you uh, pretty clear instructions as to what you're going to need to do in terms of a given check, uh, whether it's a resistance check or an attack check or you're making a skill check or the like. Um, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to explain further. Uh, and uh, I'm sure your more experienced fellow players will also be happy to direct you uh, to uh, where you'll find things uh, as far as that goes. So uh, I figure I will briefly describe our uh, heroes uh, that folks are about to uh, see, and then we will get uh, into it unless folks have any questions before we start. Okay. So... Um, Starting uh, with, I'm working with folks in the order there on my screen, um, starting with Ian playing Volcano. Um, <laughs> prince Vulcan is the exiled prince of the, uh, the, mag the molten men who dwell deep beneath the Earth's crust. Uh, after uh, he uh, lost uh, control of the throne to the uh, villainous General Gorn, um, Vulcan uh, was uh, banished to the surface world. Uh, where he has uh, since used his uh, extraordinary abilities as a molten man uh, to fight against injustice uh, while working uh, to eventually uh, return uh, to his uh, deposed kingdom and uh, eliminate the usurper to the throne uh, and free his people uh, from Gorn's despotic rule. Mm -hmm. um, to uh, my right, uh, Apuk as the mighty Saguaro. Um, uh, Daniel Morningstar uh, was a, a, a uh, Navajo uh, living on a reservation in the Southwest who uh, was exposed to uh, a uh, radioactive uh, test site out in the depths of the desert uh, by uh, a rival of his, uh, who unfortunately we won't see in this adventure, but um, and uh, mutated uh, by its effects and uh, by drinking the uh, radioactive uh, water uh, from uh, several of the cactus plants in that area to survive, uh, became uh, a uh, hybrid human cactus uh, with tremendous strength uh, 
thorny uh, spines uh, and uh, a tremendous endurance. Uh, the mighty Saguaro has since uh, devoted his powers under the uh, guidance of his uh, tribal leadership uh, to fighting for good. Um, down to my lower left, uh, we have RC as the atomic roach. Um, and uh, young Billy Hopper uh, had the misfortune to uh, be uh, at a uh, nuclear plant uh, when uh, thieves attempted to kidnap uh, a group of scientists uh, and uh, the uh, atomic materials therein uh, left for dead uh, and uh, exposed uh, to what should have been uh, a, a lethal dose of radiation. Uh, he ex instead uh, gained extraordinary abilities uh, which uh, he uh, used uh, while uh, wearing a uh, experimental uh, radioactive shielding suit uh, to apprehend the uh, criminals and rescue the scientists. Uh, Atomic Roach uh, has since uh, been uh, using his powers as a superhero while he uh, works with the self-same scientists to uh, look for a cure for the fact that his powers have also left him mildly radioactive um, that uh, affects uh, the environment uh, and people around him if he is not wearing his protective uniform. Uh, directly below me, uh, we have Alex uh, as uh, the uh, mighty and skilled Lu Lamfada. Uh, Lu is the Celtic god of light, uh, the champion of the Tuatha de Danann, uh, the people of the distant planet Danu, uh, and uh, known for uh, their long war uh, against their arch foes, the Fomorians, uh, the people of the planet Fomor. Uh, and uh, Lu is a child of two worlds, uh, born of uh, a uh, Tuathan and a Fomorian, uh, originally intended to uh, settle the peace between the two worlds, uh, but his uh, family was cruelly betrayed uh, his parents killed in an attempt uh, to kill him as well. And he was raised in secret uh, by Mananin Maklir, the god of the sea, uh, to eventually reclaim his position uh, in the court of Tara uh, and become a champion of uh, both uh, Danu uh, and Iru, uh, what the uh, Tuatha call Earth. And last, but certainly not least, uh, we have uh, Gerald who's playing uh, Miss Takal. Uh, Miss Takal is the secret sorceress of the sixth sun, uh, empowered by the mystical council of skulls uh, with ancient magical secrets. Uh, she uh, comes from, hails from uh, Central America uh, and uh, maintains a, a secret identity as an author of uh, fantasy and occult fiction, which contains more than a little truth. Uh, of her particular experiences uh, while also secretly using her magical powers uh, to protect the world from a variety of dangers. Uh, together, uh, your five heroes, uh, along with several others, are uh, known as the protectors, uh, the, uh, the champions of uh, your uh, respective uh, city. So, our story begins. Uh, you should all uh, be able to see the player's map and your respective tokens. Uh, can everybody uh, confirm that they can uh, control their tokens? You should yep, all have I'm them assigned. Moving around. All right. I have a black screen. Okay. <laughs> Let me a lot of it's covered that. up, so you might have to scroll down to find uh, it. You may need to yeah. scroll down or oh, zoom I in. See. I recommend zooming in to about 150 thereabouts. Nice. Yes, it's a yes. big map, and you are in a relatively small part of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I can see it now, but I need control over my token. OK, let's take a look there. Uh, These tokens look so cool. Well, I will thank uh, my friend and colleague, Dan Hauser. Uh, who is the artist uh, who produced uh, the art of all of these characters. Uh, okay. 
You should have control of that token up hoop. Let me double check the token itself. Oh, that's an issue. How about now? Uh, I I just reloaded. I said my scroll for a bit to find. It took me a bit to find it. Yes, I found it. Okay. Um, so, protectors, um, you uh, all suddenly um, find yourselves standing in uh, a, a large um, sort of hotel landing or the like. Um, the uh, floor below you is, uh, is carpeted in a, a sort of, of uh, slightly dizzying uh, geometric pattern. Uh, off to one side of you is a staircase, off to the other, uh, an elevator, uh, and before you, uh, a broad opening into a long, wide hall. Um, and I don't mean corridor, I mean giant convention center hall um, that is easily, he says, checking the ruler, um, about 100 feet across um, and a good deal further, longer ahead of you. Um, the sudden appearance uh, in this strange convention center hall uh, would be strange enough as it was. But in addition to that, uh, the thing that you immediately notice when you appear is that a short distance away from you is a giant red dragon uh, that has been breathing fire uh, and large portions of the hall are on fire. Um, <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, small groups of people are running and screaming in all directions uh, to get away from the giant fire-breathing lizard uh, that scuttles across the carpeting uh, and breathes another gout of flame uh, that hits uh, an upper corner uh, of the hall just out of your sight. Uh, there's a, a, a dull boom uh, and another uh, fire uh, begins raging uh, in that point. Uh, the dragon opens its mouth and uh, roars uh, down the, the corridor. So if you would all select your tokens and please roll your initiative on your character sheet by simply clicking your initiative. Excellent. Well done. Uh, roll. <laughs> I'd never roll well on initiative. I got a 26. Yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. <laughs> Is it like a plus six for initiative? or I have a plus eight for initiative. Oh, goodness. Yeah, you go fast. All right. I was not quick to the draw, it seems. And... No, I always get that wrong. There we go. All right. Steve, we just appeared here, right? Like, this is not... Yep. Just, like, teleported here? You I just... Ask, I, like, do we know her? You just suddenly found yourselves here. Um, so, uh, Lou, your action is first. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Volcano a sort of quirky smile and say, that's not one of your cousins, is it? Uh, I... What, what is this? Uh, I... I've never seen any people. This fire. Uh, I, I, so there are dragons, but the, in the in the depths, but nothing like that. Our dragons right. are much more interesting. Well, then I'll put a stop to this beast. I am the Lord of Light and the Master of Skills, and uh, I'm going to step forward to the dragon. And I'm going to throw a spear in its mouth. Okay. Uh... You can move however uh, far you'd like. Um, your regular movement is basically six squares. Oh, and I can leap um, a mile. So, But I you can, I was going to say, you could leap the length of this hall if you wanted to pretty easily. Um, I want to leap up and at the apex of my leap, I want to throw the spear down at the dragon and try to catch the spear when I land near the Okay. Dragon. Uh, give me an attack check with your Spear of Light. All right, here we go. 18 to hit the dragon. Okay. Uh, the dragon is, as you imagine, a fairly good-sized target. 
Uh, and so uh, your spear blow uh, strikes uh, along its uh, scaly hide. Uh, and the uh, Lou's uh, spear uh, looks uh, like a, a gold-capped staff, uh, but when he wields it, uh, a glowing uh, spearhead uh, formed out of light uh, in the shape of uh, Celtic knotwork appears uh, at one end of it. Uh, he flings uh, the spear uh, and it grazes along the uh, side of the dragon's scales, uh, sending uh, glowing sparks flying uh, from the uh, impact. Uh, then uh, the, the spear sort of halts in its flight and reverses flinging back through the air uh, to a return uh, to Lou's hand. Uh, the dragon roars uh, in pain uh, from the strike, uh, its massive horned head uh, turning in your direction, Lou. Yeah, and I will land next to it and say, you great Welsh beast, I'll put thee down. All right, so place yourself uh, nearby where the dragon, where you land... It is dark on my map, so yeah, I'm gonna I, I was gonna try mention, to yeah, go over there. The, oh, do we need to the, change the lighting? My... <laughs> um, it's a quick suggestion: uh, the GM can always shift ping an area, and that will move everybody's cameras to that area. Okay. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Yeah, shift click. Yeah, shift ping. Let me. Hmm. Where are my lighting controls? It looks like you have regular uh, fog of war turned on instead of dynamic. So there's uh, should be a like in the yeah, ruler. It says dynamic. clear darkness. There's like an eyeball in the GM tools. There should be yeah. like reveal areas. Yeah. Uh, what do I do with that? And then you draw on the map the areas you want to reveal. All right. Like you may you draw a box out, and anything that's in that area you should reveal. Apologies. No problem. How is that? Can everyone see it? Yeah, I can see. Uh, I see two dragons. Are there supposed to be two dragons? Uh, it turns out that other dragon is a statue <laughs> uh, of a dragon. <laughs> Uh, that looks to be made out of uh, some very nicely done paper mache or the like. Um, and part of it is currently on fire. Uh, now that I can see it, I'm going to angle myself so that I'm not in like breath weapon line with the party or with that group of civilians that's running away. All right. And I will try to keep its attention focused on me. Okay. Does this, so wait, does this dragon look identical except for not being on fire to the to the statue? Sorry. Oh, I was saying, I so do, just to be clear, does this one look identical uh, to the one with the statue? Similar. Similar. Very okay. similar. All right. Uh, volcano. Your right. action is next. So uh, each square is five feet, just to confirm, because I, I, I don't move an ability, yep. so I actually need to wear movement. Okay. Yep. So there you go. 30 feet movement, I think? Yep. You can move six squares by normal movement. Okay, so I'm going to go up to him. So Six, so yeah, I'm not... Exact range of that. So, but to try to call it to from actually cause more damage instead of attacking, I'm going to use my fearsome presence. Mm -hmm. So, say, creature of flame, I'll show you what true heat is. All right. Give me an intimidation check, if you would, please. I think it's actually tied to the power. Is it specifically tied to intimidation instead of just the power of fearsome presence? Uh, oh, you're using your affliction, right? Yeah. Try to, uh, try yeah, to get click, it. Doesn't. Click on that power to give me your uh, DC, if you would. Uh, try to I pop the sheet out, but it wasn't. Let me try doing it within the hero thing. Let me take a look. So, you are DC 16 on that. 
All right. A button for uh, it. The uh, dragon uh, is definitely, uh, its attention is drawn away from Lou and uh, towards uh, Volcano. Uh, the uh, dragon seems uh, to hesitate uh, for a moment uh, and uh, then uh, lunges uh, towards uh, Volcano a step, uh, unleashing a, uh, a blast of fire uh, from its mouth. Uh, flames uh, roar uh, across uh, the place uh, where Volcano is standing, uh, completely engulfing him uh, in a, a cloud of fire. Um, and uh, a moment later, uh, the flames clear, uh, leaving a big, wide swath of burned carpeting um, with small flames burning around the edges and Volcano standing in the midst yeah. completely unaffected. And I say, well, you think that's heat? I'll show you real heat. This thing isn't ma- I guess I yell back to the others. This thing's fire isn't magical. It's just common fire. It's also not very bright. No. <laughs> All right, and uh, Mr. Call. All right, uh, Mr. Call sees all the fire uh, mm-hmm. and all the people, so uh, she is going to uh, use her. Uh, oh, what's the name of it? Uh, the create. Mm-hmm. Uh, to uh, make some sort of like flat, non-flammable panels that I can push down on the places where the fire is to try to put them out so it doesn't spread. Mm-hmm. All right. Which area of fire uh, would you like to try and contain? Uh, I would like to probably get this area over here first first but if okay. i can run something down uh along this this area okay uh, all right from... why don't you give me a power check with your create rank all right Um, I believe the create is 12. I believe you are right about that. All right. Sorry. No worries. And if nothing else, uh, folks can use the die roller uh, to uh, do just what uh, Gerald is doing here. Uh, all right. So uh, Mr. Kyle uh, conjures uh, and uh, glowing uh, fields of energy uh, appear and uh, surround uh, this area of fire. Um, and uh, contain it uh, so tightly that the flames almost immediately go out. Uh, The uh, glowing uh, field uh, quickly fills uh, with with dark smoke smothering the flames uh, and uh, Mr. Kyle uh, lowers it uh, to the, the floor, uh, completely uh, clearing the area, save for the, the blackened, uh, charred area uh, affected by the fire. Uh, Atomic Roach, it is your action. All right. Uh, well, I see the fire like go out, and I think mm-hmm. I kind of see that as an opening to leap in and kind of get behind the dragon there. Okay. Uh, and kind of flank it, draw its attention a bit. Uh, so like I kick off the wall, maybe, you know, bounce off the ceiling, you know, trying to be really mm-hmm. uh, visible to this thing. All right. And... Place yourself where you'd like to land. All uh, right. Let's go with about here. Just kind of right behind it. Okay. Um, 
and then I want to just immediately unleash um, and a, and a, a what is it? A radiation blast. Okay. Uh, so roll your attack with your radiation blast. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, your uh, blast uh, goes a little bit wide as the, the dragon trying to follow your movements as you ricochet off the ceiling, the floor, the nearby wall uh, to land in a crouch and unleash your blast. The dragon is meanwhile spinning and turning to try and track and follow you. Um, and it turns at the last moment. Uh, your radiation blast uh, goes narrowly past it uh, and uh, strikes the uh, nearby uh, wall uh, not far from uh, where these uh, cluster of people are, are banging at these exterior doors um, to try and get out. Um, the, the blast leaves a, uh, a sort of faintly green glowing uh, hole uh, in the wall. Oh, crap. Oi, Roach, watch out. Be more careful, Roach. You, you're the one who told me human, normal humans don't have resistance to radiation. Yeah, don't, uh, don't, don't go through that hole. Um, and Saguaro. All right, Saguaro's going to look at this situation. The dragons are dangerous, but the burning building is the biggest danger to the people here. So he is going to leap to here. Mm -hmm. And with your permission, I would like to power stunt my shockwave power to um, make a powerful uh, gust of wind that blows out all the fires within 30 feet of me, which would be all the ones right, right around here. Mm -hmm. All right. I'd say that's a good plan. Um, so I should note, uh, all of you have uh, the usual one hero point to start with. And uh, I assume in this case uh, that you would like to spend it on uh, Saguaro's uh, power stunt so you are not fatigued. Um, you know, actually, I'll, I'll take the fatigue for now. Okay, fair enough. It'll, I'll, it'll only slow me down a little bit to start with. All right. Um, give me a uh, strength check for Saguaro. Ooh. Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing here. <clears throat> Come on, Swaro. Strength check. Let's do this. Come on, strength check. Um, you know what? I'm gonna I am going to um extra effort and then to roll that again and then spend that hero point. Okay. Um or you know what, I'll just I'll just Spend the hero point to reroll. All right, fair I enough. Really, I want. I just really want these fires out so people are <laughs> safe. Oh, 29. Look at that. There we go. There we go. We're looking for. All right, uh, Saguaro uh, leaps uh, across uh, half of the the hall over the the dragon's head, uh, landing uh, in front of the looming form of the the dragon statue, uh, slamming his uh, big hands uh, together. Uh, there's a powerful rush of air uh, that uh, ripples out um, these uh, fires immediately around him are blown out uh, by the force uh, of the wind. Uh, a few of the bystanders are also pushed back uh, against the nearby wall, um, although uh, without any harm. Uh, and uh, the statue um, rears up almost uh, like a dragon rearing up on its, its hind legs uh, as its wings catch the, the wind. Uh, and then it topples back over um, and lands on the, fl uh, the floor with a crash. Um, the top part of it breaks off uh, and uh, just crumples to the floor. Uh, it turns out it's pretty light. And uh, Lou, it is your turn again. Uh, I'm going to run underneath the dragon and I'm going to stab it in the chest. Okay. Uh, and I'll use two points of power attack on this one. Okay. 
minus two to your attack check. Stab. Fifteen to hit the dragon with minus okay. two. Okay. Um, you uh, dive, uh, dodge under the dragon, uh, bringing uh, Lewin, your spear of light, uh, up in a powerful thrust. Uh, the dragon sweeps one of its uh, clawed uh, forelimbs uh, to the side, um, not really hitting you, but sort of brushing you to one side, um, and you stumble slightly. Um, Lewin's uh, glowing spearhead scrapes along the uh, dragon's hard scales uh, with uh, several sparks, uh, but leaves nothing more than a slight scratch. Perhaps you will be a vile opponent, you witless worm. Uh, Volcano, your turn. All right. Uh, question. Can I t- technically combine both all attack and power attack? Yes, you can. All right. I'm going to do both because I know this thing can't hurt me with its fire. And I don't think it's just going to do- doesn't seem very good at dodging, but it has a thick hide. So all right. I'm going to take a few steps forward and say, Lou, let me show you how it's done. You know, hey, big, ugly and scaly. Let me show you. All I right. got something here for you as I give him a nice deck in the snaz. <laughs> All right. So uh, you have both uh, all out and power attack. So I assume you're going for the full five. Yep. Uh, probably not full five on the power on the uh, the power attack. I'll probably just do that for the plus two. I think is the other option. All right. Uh, so that gives you a, uh, well, actually, it gives you no modifier at all because of the all-out attack combined with it. Um, so you are basically reducing your defense and re- increasing your damage uh, without a modifier mm-hmm. to your attack roll. Unfortunately, a 10, um, you uh, do step forward. Uh, you throw a punch, uh, and uh, the, the dragon... Uh, turns, twists a bit uh, towards you, uh, and uh, your uh, punch lands on uh, an armored part of its uh, shoulder. Um, It's tough. Uh, It is uh, like striking solid rock, uh, and uh, the the dragon is barely moved uh, by the uh, force of your blow. This thing's tougher than I thought. All right, then. I'm gonna need some, I'm gonna need a new plan. Volcano, perhaps we should work together next round. <clears throat> Maybe. Uh, the dragon uh, lunges uh, forward uh, and uh, attempts to snatch Volcano up in its jaws. Uh... So I should have, I believe, a zero on defense because of the yield mode. Indeed. Um, and uh, it uh, grabs uh, Volcano in its maw, uh, lifting him uh, up off the floor. Can you give me a toughness resistance check for Volcano? Sure. There we go. All right, 17. Uh, Volcano, you are... uh, Take a hit. uh, Minus one penalty to your toughness checks. Uh, A bruise? A bruise, correct. Uh, And uh, the dragon uh, basically snaps uh, Volcano up uh, in its jaws and flings him. Uh, Volcano, you go flying through this door uh, and into this room uh, where you collide uh, with this heavy shelf, uh, which proceeds to collapse on top of you. Um, Can you give me another toughness check? All right. Doesn't hurt you, though. Um, The the wall and the door and the shelf are in far worse shape. as they are all smashed uh, into splinters uh, from uh, your massive rocky body uh, flying through them like a cannonball. If I try to stand up and kind of dust myself off and see if I can get a peek at what on earth, if any, if any items on the shelf, just like if, as it's falling off me, like if it's a book or <laughs> what is it? 
Uh, it does appear uh, to be a um, uh, like a, a bookshelf of some sort. Um, there are a bunch of, of um, large books and boxes uh, with brightly colored covers uh, and the like uh, scattered on the floor all around you. I was going to say it's a, it was someone's display of their mint condition comic books. No, the they're convention. not comic books. <laughs> so, um, also, actually, I forgot to mention for the melee attack I had, can I use a... Uh, this thing probably is resistant to heat, but could I use my reaction for fire damage? Uh, for heat aura? I did take your heat aura into account. Oh, you did? Okay. I didn't uh, know if it was counted or not. And uh, it is Miss Takal's turn. I will point at Atomic Roach and say, it's up to us to do with the dragon now, mate. Um, I'm still fine, what? I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Carl is going to uh, fly out so she can get a better view and see all these people standing here not going out the doors. Uh, and going to use... Uh, Mystic Levitation mm -hmm. uh, to try to push these doors open. Okay. If that's possible. It is indeed. Uh, why don't you give me a uh, power rank roll with your Mystic Levitation? Uh, I think I have it right. Effectively using it as your strength. Okay. Uh, you uh, press uh, out against the, the doors with the, the power of your sorcery. Uh, a glow surrounds the doors as uh, the, the people immediately near them back away slightly um, as the uh, doors begin to glow brightly. Uh, you push uh, hard. Uh, initially, you think that the, the doors should open easily, uh, and uh, you push hard enough to literally crumple uh, the doors. Uh, they, they begin to uh, collapse outward slightly uh, and tear off their hinges, um, and you can see another sort of glow of some sort beyond them uh, when you pause uh, and the, the two broken doors collapse to the floor, you can see there's a glowing green wall of some sort just beyond uh, the, the doors uh, that they were pressed up against uh, that prevented them from opening. Uh, one of the, the people near seeing the doors collapse and looking at the, the glowing walls yells, we can't get out. And I'll say, run the other way. <clears throat> and uh, atomic Get as far roach. away from it as you can. So I see this dragon just like, you know, knock down one of our heavy hitters. Yep. And I was just thinking fl about flung volcano across the room. <laughs> and I was thinking about like kind of going on crowd control. But seeing that, I say I, I'm just like, well, I, I guess I'm I'm not switching switching duties right now and i'm just going to go up and get pretty much right underneath it and try to blast up again with my atomic uh with my uh atomic radiation blast okay give me an attack check uh, with your blast uh, move yourself into position if you are moving yeah we'll just move slightly closer oh man uh I want to use one of my hero points to, to reroll. Okay. Um, oh, uh, Mr. Takal, uh, take a hero point for your efforts. All right. All right, so I use my... Uh, oh, wait, how do I... Oh, okay, there we go. I put out one of my hero points. Um, and let's try that again. All right, 18. Uh, that will hit uh, 26... Uh, Atomic Roach, you unleash uh, a, a powerful blast of uh, atomic energy, uh, and uh, the uh, it sears along the dragon's side, 
um, blackening and uh, burning uh, its scales. Uh, the dragon uh, roars uh, in pain uh, and staggers, uh, nearly falling uh, to the, the ground. Uh, clearly, uh, it has uh, never uh, been, probably never been burned by anything before. Um, I want to use this opportunity then to do extra effort and blast it again. Okay. Give me another radiation blast attack. And uh, I'd like to use my, can I use my hero point to reroll that one as well? Uh, you've or... already used your hero point as I understand it. Oh, okay. Sorry. It looked like I had two of them. Uh, so I think everybody started okay. with the usual one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, sorry, it was just the visual looked like I had to. Nope. Um, okay, then, yeah, I, uh, I gave it another try, and it <laughs> doesn't look like it won't Unfortunately, your, your second blast goes wide. Uh, the, the dragon, uh, clearly realizing that you are a threat, um, sort of whirls in your direction, um, and uh, it, as it does so, uh, your blast narrowly misses it, um, burning a swath of the, the carpeting, but otherwise having no uh, real effect. Uh, and Saguaro, it is your action. All right. Saguaro figures that whatever force teleported us here probably brought this dragon here. And it doesn't need to be destructive, but it probably didn't want to be here in the first place. So Saguaro's going to jump down in front of it, and he says, Look, I don't know if you can understand me, but we didn't bring you here. We were brought here against our will, too. So... We gotta put this. Uh, we gotta put this threat down, and you're causing too much of a problem. So it's enough. And he's gonna slap his hands and uh, try to give this guy the thunderclap and knock him down and knock him out. Okay. Without necessarily directly hurting him, because it's probably not his fault that he's here. So he has to make a uh, DC twenty uh, dodge and then for it. Okay. Um, Is that selective, Saguaro, or do we have to make that save too? Uh, it's actually close range, so um, it's it's only directly next to me. But it is an area effect. How big an area? A uh, close range. It's only directly close. Right. Like, that means right it originates range. from you, but. Um, I believe that it's only in the squares adjacent to me that I right. that the shockwave happens. Fair enough for this purpose. And um, the unsurprisingly, the dragon is not very effective uh, at dodging, uh, especially at this close distance. Um, however, uh, it is very tough. Uh, and uh, the, the force of your um, thunderclap, uh, Saguaro, uh, causes the, the dragon to sort of uh, sh wince uh, and it sort of shakes its head uh, and then roars uh, furiously at you. I'm just going to stand there and roar back at it. I'm like, bah! All right. Uh, then uh, the uh, various bystanders who uh, are running for the far doors uh, are brought up short as uh, those doors uh, burst open uh, into the room. Uh, and another uh, large group of people come rushing through them. Select all of these people. Those I probably didn't need to hide. So wait, wait which uh, is it? The doors that were just blasted right, a little bit ago. That's the brother coming in. I think from, it's the one at the bottom. I think it's the doors oh, okay. at the bottom, at least based on yep. the okay. dark finger build. Yeah. Uh, for those of you who don't see down here, bridge cut. <laughs> Ah, come on, tokens. Oh no, is All that right. a giant? 
another large group yeah. of people come <laughs> rushing out the doors, followed by a giant. Um, is it like a me giant or like a Thor giant? Uh, it is a uh, looks like a blue skinned giant about 16 feet tall. Uh, he comes crashing through the doors and the wall um, because the doors are far too small um, and uh, simply makes a big giant sized hole in the wall uh, as he comes crashing through uh, wielding a, a, a massive hammer uh, in one hand uh, and roaring uh, furiously at the screaming people who are running away from him. Uh, the uh, bystanders who had been running towards that door uh, all come up short um, and stare up in terror at the giant that has just doused them with uh, a shower of plaster dust uh, and drywall uh, from smashing through the wall. Um, and uh, several of them scream in terror as they prepare to run the other way. Uh, Lou, it is your action. Oh, boy. Um, I'm going to look at Roach and say, you got this dragon? I'm going to go get the guy. I'm going to go get the Fomorian over there. Wait, wait, wait. No, I didn't say I had this. All right, good job. <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to leap over and try to intercept the giant and protect these people from feeling its wrath. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. Um here we go. I'm not going to use any power attack or odd attack or anything on this. I'm just going to smack him around. Okay. Ooh, a 29 to hit. Ah, oh, that's a nice hit. For a DC 25. Okay. Uh, Lou, uh, you drive uh, your spear uh, into the, uh, the giant's leg. Uh, and uh, there is a, uh, a flash of light um, as uh, Lewin uh, connects uh, with uh, the giant. Uh, he uh, roars uh, and stumbles uh, at his, his leg going out from under him. Uh, he drops uh, to, to one knee uh, um, in front of you. Uh, several of the uh, nearby people scattering uh, away from him as quickly as they are able. And can I spend, uh, can I use, I would like to go fatigue to do extra effort, and I'd like to spend a hero point to get access to the improved trip advantage. I'd like to try and trip him. Okay. And say something pithy about the larger they are, the larger they are. Okay. Uh, you're going to give me a trip attack. Yes. And uh, I can do that with the spear, right? I can try to trip him with the you spear. You absolutely can. Okay. I've already got it in his kneecap. Might as well twist. Uh, 18 to hit. Okay. And uh, I believe you are going to give me a strength check. I think it's athletics or acrobatics. Athletics or acrobatics, right? Uh, so I assume for your, uh, in your case, it will probably be athletics. Yes, I've got one more in athletics. So I will go ahead and give okay. that a try. Oh, no. I rolled a whole 10. Uh, unfortunately, uh, although you nearly do um, lay the giant out, um, he's massive. Uh, and even with your strength, uh, it's difficult uh, to, uh, to completely uh, pull him off his feet. Uh, the uh, giant uh, roars, Away, Nat! Uh, and swings uh, his hammer at you. Uh, well, at least he's looking at me and not the bystanders. What's your parry defense, Lou? My parry defense is 12. 22. Sorry. My parry 12. DC is 22. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, 12 seems awfully low. Um, <laughs> and uh, the uh, giant's uh, massive hammer uh, swooshes in, uh, you uh, bring up uh, the, your spear and uh, block it um, in mid-flight. Uh, and there's a, a, a clash, uh, a loud sound, uh, and a, a flash of light uh, as uh, Lewin blocks the massive iron-headed hammer. 
Impossible. It's quite possible. Now tell me, are you from Jotunheim or are you from Danu? I will crush you. Uh, volcano, it is your action. All right, so I'm going to start moving up. On the way out, I'm going to pick up one of the bookshelves in my hand. Just mm -hmm. like pick it up and just kind of as a thing to go. Four, five, six. And yep, there's a hey, no one throws a, no one throws Prince Volcano th through a wall. As I throw the bookshelf I have in my hand at it, straight at his head. Mm hmm. All right. Give me a th uh, attack roll for your throw. Okay. Fortunately, uh, the dragon doesn't dodge overly well. Um, and um, uh, Volcanoes uh, hurled, uh, hurls one of the massive bookcases. Uh, it hits the dragon in the head, uh, shattering uh, into pieces that scatter uh, to the floor. Uh, the, the dragon seems momentarily dazed uh, by the, the hit, shaking its, its head uh, slightly. Uh, and Mr. Kahl, it is your action. All right, are, the, uh, are these bathrooms clearly marked? Uh, they are indeed marked as such. All right. I'm going to yell, everybody into the bathrooms. All right. Uh, and I am going to uh, blast the dragon. Okay. And I'm going to seven. use a hero point to reroll the attack. Okay. Hope it's better. It's better. All right. Uh, you unleash a blast of mystic force uh, at the uh, the dragon. Uh, it slams uh, into it, uh, driving it back slightly. Uh, uh, the dragon spreads its uh, wings uh, to halt uh, its uh, being pushed back. Its claws ripping long rents uh, in, the, in the carpet uh, against the uh, force of your blast. It roars its defiance. And... Uh, I think the numbers on the roll 20 sheet might be off. Okay. Because uh, it only uh, gave a plus three bonus and on the... Uh, Hero Lab sheet, it says it's a plus eight. Hmm. Okay, that is strange. Uh, it... Hmm. All right. I'm not sure why that would be. <clears throat> um, if you want to give me permission to sheet, I can fix it real quick. Sure. Um, I know they're all visible to everybody. Them. But uh, one second. Oh, it's not counting the uh, the advantages. Ah, uh, I see. Yeah. Uh, you might need to. Are you clicking on the attack uh, block or the actual? I just oh, the attack block. The attack block. Attack it. block. Okay. Uh, uh, Apuk, you have edit privileges. Cool. cool. I'll fix that real quick. Um, but doesn't significantly change things, but thank you for letting me know. Um, and the dragon uh, faced with a choice of enemies uh, still intends uh, to deal with Atomic Roach. <laughs> uh, and uh, the massive beast uh, turns uh, and uh, sort of whirls uh, atomic roach. It uh, slams uh, its uh, tail uh, into you hard enough uh, to uh, send you flying, potentially. Can you give me a toughness check? What was that? 
Uh, toughness check for Atomic Roach, please. Toughness check. All right. Uh, how am I feeling? You are uh, dazed uh, by the force of that blow. Uh, so you take a bruise, uh, and uh, you are only going to be limited to one action on your next turn. Uh, and uh, the dragon sends you flying into the paper mache statue's remains. Uh, Atomic Roach hits it uh, with a, a, a burst of broken pieces of uh, the fake dragon scattering uh, all about uh, the bystanders do their best to follow Mr. Carl's instructions and flee towards the restrooms. I hit the dragon. I'm just like, I said I didn't have this. <laughs> <laughs> and the mighty Saguaro. All right. <clears throat> Seeing that this thing isn't super fast, I'm going to take a chance and try to end this quickly. So everybody sees him ex like open up his arms and all the thorns on his arms grow into big, huge, nasty, crazy spikes. And then I'm going to leap up into the air and bring one of those big, heavy spike hands down on his head with a power attack. Okay. Let's try it with my power spines attack with a nine, a natural one. Or natural <laughs> six, actually. Um, all right. You know what? I'm going to use my luck point. To okay. Roll. because we need to figure out what's going on here and not keep playing around with all this. Uh, all right. So a 15, 15 total. 15, indeed. All right. So a 32 DC. Uh, you almost think at the, the that Sibuar, the dragon is going to duck out of the way at the last moment, but um, the amount of damage uh, that uh, Atomic Roach and the others have inflicted uh, is enough uh, that uh, it doesn't move quite fast enough. Um, and uh, Saguaro comes down uh, upon it with a, a massive thoom, uh, driving the dragon's head uh, down to the floor uh, where uh, it hits with a crash uh, followed momentarily thereafter by its body just dropping to the, the floor uh, of the hall uh, where it lies there and sort of lulls slightly over on its side, uh, lying quite unmoving. After the smoke and debris clear, Sawaro's just sort of sitting next to the unconscious dragon, patting him on his head, and he's like, don't worry, buddy, we'll get you back where you belong. All right. Lou, it is your action. Well, not to be outdone by the mighty Zawaro, I'm going to uh, take my mighty spear and stab this giant many times. Okay. Uh, and I'll use two points of power attack this time. All right. Minus uh, two to your attack check. Oh, boy. Ten to hit. Unfortunately, uh, the giant uh, brings his hammer... Uh, to bear uh, and swipes your spear strike aside uh, with a loud clang as your weapons clash and glowing sparks uh, fly through the air. The giant then winds up uh, and swings a, a powerful blow. Uh, but fortunately, uh, narrowly misses uh, as uh, Lou dodges nimbly to one side, the hammer blow smashes into the floor, um, tearing up uh, parts of the, the, the carpet and sending shards of broken concrete uh, flying into the air from the, the small uh, crack uh, that it places uh, in the flooring itself. They will speak of this battle in the halls of the Tuatha Danan for many ages, my friend. 
And uh, Volcano, it is your action. I have no way of getting towards him too fast, so I'm going to... Over here, and I'm going to break off one of the dragons, some uh, some of the dragon's claws. Uh huh. And uh, so, what's the distance on my throw? Just so I get an idea if I have any. Dis- All right. So let's see here. Volcano's throwing attack should be a plus six bonus. I got that, but like, is there a limit on like the distance, like of how far oh, I can do? Oh, not it? with your not with your strength. Oh, good to know. Okay. <laughs> you, you, you could throw something the length of this hall easily. Right. Being this guy seems to have no way of having a range attack other than his axe. I'm going to all out attack. All right. And I'm going to like throw one of the dragons, just take one of the dragon's claws and kind of throw it like a, throw it like a sharp spear. Mm-hmm. Right at him and go, hey, your buddy left this behind for you. <clears throat> That could have been better for a roll. So, be so man, the base are being mean to us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> With your power attack modifier, I believe that's a thirteen, correct? It, wait, so oh no, I'm actually, yeah, to get, all I, out attacking. I'm all, all out attacking. attacking excuse me. So I would only introduce um, my, da- right. my defense dice. <laughs> um, so you're, with your all out attack modifier, that's a fifteen or thirteen mm-hmm. plus five. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, well, that will, in fact, just hit. Uh, So, um, Volcano um, snaps off uh, one of the the dragon's massive talons uh, and winds up and flings it uh, like uh, almost like a discus uh, across the the room. Uh, It flies through the air, spinning end over end, uh, and slams uh, into the uh, giant's uh, shoulder, uh, s- driving him back, uh, staggering uh, against the uh, wall uh, just behind him. Um, the dr- uh, giant uh, drops his hammer uh, held in that arm uh, and uh, reflexively clutches uh, at the uh, place where the claw impacted him, uh, wincing. Uh, he is uh, looks. He's looks on the ropes. Um, Same. Well, you can add that to the to the to the horns on your helmet, <laughs> Mister Carl. It is your action. All right. Uh, I'm going to shout at everybody into the bathroom. Into the bathroom. Indeed, uh, that is where everyone is headed. And I am going to float up a little higher so I can get a clear shot at the giant. And I'm going to try another mystic blast. Okay. Let me an attack. 24. Nice. All right. Uh, Mystical uh, levitates uh, up into the air. Uh, her uh, magical scepter held uh, in one hand and uh, then uh, levels it uh, at the the giant, uh, a glowing ghostly beam uh, of energy lances out uh, and strikes uh, the giant, corsicating uh, around him. Uh, he tries to rise, uh, but the energy blast slams him further against the, the wall until he topples to one side Uh, He catches himself with one hand, tries to lever himself back up, and then slumps to the floor, unconscious. I'm going to kick him one time in the helmet just to be sure. All right. Uh, A momentary hush uh, falls uh, over the uh, hall as uh, people are still... Uh, basically running for uh, the, the restrooms uh, and as quickly as they can, making their way uh, through the doors inside. Uh, there's a strange sort of greenish shimmer of light uh, 
uh, around the unconscious forms of the dragon and the giant. Uh, and in an instant, they disappear. Mm. Even a trophy, yeah. Well, it's like magic of some kind. That's I, what um, I guess. My awareness of magic is limited to uh, just the things that I know culturally. Is anyone else here, like perhaps Misty Call, most yeah. more uh, more aware of these sorts of things? The call. What have you got? I have some um, understanding of magic. Saguaro, um from nearby. Uh, a small, a small knot of people who were huddled near the doors uh, moves towards you. Um, in the lead is uh, a young man who's uh, wearing um, uh, sort of a spandex, um, like biking outfit, workout outfit, maybe, um, but like a spandex suit, short sleeves, sh- mid thigh uh, cut in in different shades of blue uh he's wearing sneakers and curiously enough he's wearing shades or sunglasses although you're indoors um and there's a there's a logo on one uh, on the the left breast of his um outfit um he he sort of uh jogs up towards you as the other people are care- carefully moving away from the doors and he's like that was amazing you guys you guys are great. Uh, who, who are you? I don't think I've ever seen you before. People destroy. Maybe they're all magic as well. I, I've never seen people dress like this. Uh, I'm going to look at him and be like, mm, well, um, people... You're not from Freedom City, right? No, no, we're not from Freedom City. We live out here. Uh, people call us the protectors. But, You're... Uh, you live in Indianapolis? Uh, where do we live, actually? Do not do we live, like, in Arizona or something as a team? Uh, well, is there an Indiana a... in our universe, or we live in a good... There year? is. You've, you've oh. heard of Indianapolis. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure Lou has ever been. Um, <laughs> but uh, the Protectors hail from a place called Epoch City. Um, and uh, that's usually where you operate. Obviously, you're not there. Yeah, where where is that? Like on, uh, it's like, on the on the eastern seaboard. Okay, uh, like this... he's, he's going to say, uh, "Well, we normally we operate out of Epoch City, but all of a where? sudden we were just I mean, don't worry about it, don't worry about it." But suddenly we were here, same as those dragons and stuff. What about well, you? Did you come here on your own, or did you appear here like gla- the rest of us? I'm I'm here for Icon. Oh, for what now? The icon, the the superhero convention. <laughs> We're all. I think. I mean, like he kind of like gestures up and down at what he's wearing. I mean, like I don't dress like Johnny Rocket all the time. I Johnny who? I I try not to judge. Roach walks up and says, "Convention." Of superhero fans, are there going to be any other superheroes here, or any any well, superheroes here? I mean, there, yeah, there was supposed to be, but you know, superhero appearances, they say, never guaranteed, because you know things happen uh, and all of that. But um, yeah, I, I, you guys aren't like guests or anything. We're somebody's guests because we just appeared here out of nowhere. Spurs of time to go into something like this. Is there supposed to be some sort of wizard or sorcerer here? Not that I know of. I mean, I have seen a couple of guys uh, in some pretty cool Eldritch costumes. Hmm. Eldritch costumes. Oh, and there was that one guy who had the Malador mask. That was pretty cool. Hmm. We don't know who you're talking about, kid. Yeah, is there Brent. someone perhaps who's like, do you know where we would go to talk to someone who's in charge here? Uh, I guess we could uh, get you to the convention ops uh, and find out what's going on. I kind of look around. Is that, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? 
kind of just shrugged and be like, uh, you guys know this like be- is only like this better than I do. I've never seen as many people like, gathering as many people in my life. They probably won't know too much more than we know, but before anything else, oh my god, there's a fire over here still. Yes. Yeah, something trying to go to like stomp that out. <laughs> uh, does Volcano have fire control powers? I do not know, but I am fires, and so I probably just kind of walk into it, just kind of smother the flame. <laughs> that is easy enough, uh, and you are all able to put out the fire uh, pretty quickly. Um, most of the um, uh, bystanders uh, seem to uh, realize that the immediate danger is past, and a number of a small crowd uh, is beginning to gather uh, in your immediate area. Um, several other um, folks uh, offer their their thanks and their appreciation for your help uh, and the like. Uh, and a lot of them are talking back and forth, like, "Do you know who they are? I don't remember. You know, have you heard of these guys? They call themselves the Protectors. Is that are they a West Coast group?" Um, and are discussing it. With, the, are they the, the ones from Emerald City? No, that's the Sentinels. Um, I'm sure, but they have a Rocky guy. Um, and the, the, a couple of minor arguments are starting to break out uh, amongst uh, people who are have decided they think they know who you are uh, versus the people who are clearly uh, say that they've never heard of you. Um, when uh, someone... Gee, I was into the Protectors five years ago. They're, now they're all sold out, though. <laughs> uh, someone pushes uh, his way uh, between a couple of people in the crowd. And says, I can tell you who they are. He stops and looks at the group of you um, and just sort of pauses for a moment. Like, I don't believe it. You're really here. Hi, we are really here. Who are you? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is this is kind of weird. Um, uh, so I, I'm I'm Mark Stevens. Um, I think I created you. No. Uh, what? Uh, come on. Uh, I'll I'll show you. Uh, he uh, turns and sort of gestures for you to follow him. I would look back mm. at the group and say, do we want to follow this lead? There's a really better opportunity. This guy at least seems to be giving us something. Even if he's a cra- even if he's a crazy, at least we could just, I don't know, act, talk to him and ask him questions. To call In this case I scenario, call. we can alert the op- we can alert the convention ops about him when we talk to when we talk to them. Yeah, I kind of like uh, nudge over to call him like a any way of detecting which I case this entire thing is all just a big magic setup. Uh, can I use my mystic senses to uh, see if there's anything magical around? Um, yeah, give me a perception check, if you would. Uh, Mr. Call, you focus your magical senses uh, on the area around you, and you're not sensing anything on any unusual magical forces. There is some kind of strange vibration at work there there's definitely an unsettling a strange energy uh about this place uh, it's not any kind of magic uh that you've ever encountered or sensed before you're not even sure it's magic at all um but there's something strange happening here it's odd it's not clearly magic but there's something happening here. Mm. May just be that we're in a different place. Mm. And what is that it. smell? Uh, it for the universe we come from is multiversal travel a a known concept or oh, of course be entirely new. Okay, okay. of course know, maybe you've, you've all heard different dimensions and parallel Earths and mm-hmm. you know all and of that. I mean, I mean sort Luke, of thing. Come, Luke, Luke comes from another dimension. Luke, right? I am from 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 another planet you do that. <laughs> Like, well, I mean, multiverse is a weird thing. Is that weird green magic still outside? That weird force field? It is, in fact. 
does TKL do you out of, out of character? Do you have uh, like expertise magic or knowledge magical lore or something like that? Uh, she doesn't. Do uh, I do have expertise magic. Okay, can maybe you can try to figure out what's going on with those force fields and the creatures and stuff. Uh, I can tell you even without the expertise check, uh, given your uh, already uh, active magical awareness, that the glowing barrier. Uh, beyond the doors is not magical. Hmm. That's um, not magic. Could maybe I technology? parlay my maybe... expertise physics into something uh, multiversal? Uh... If you'd like to make a, a skill check, by all means. No. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> It's weird in your in your skilled opinion. Yeah. Even Bug Boy doesn't know what it is. There must be something weird. All right. So oh, I'm down uh, to follow Mr. Stevens. Uh, in fact, uh, Stevens uh, stops at the the doors uh, into the uh, room uh, beyond the hall and sort of turns and is like, "You guys coming?" Yeah. If you are our creator, I would like to have words with you about what happened to my mother and father. And also my entire my entire civilization. <laughs> he uh, like grimaces slightly. Yeah. Um, wow. Uh, yeah. Tragic backstories. Who, who thought? I follow along. All right. Yoink. So, uh, Stevens leads you uh, into the Great Hall, which um, is a, a huge vaulted convention area, um, high ceiling, cavernous ceilings overhead with uh, very unflattering uh, uh, um, uh, lighting, uh, fluorescent lighting. Uh, and uh, all throughout the room, are uh, tables and booths um, that are filled uh, with a bewildering variety of merchandise of all kinds, uh, comic books and graphic novels and books and uh, t-shirts and knickknacks, statues, uh, costuming, uh, all kinds of things, uh, all of it focused around various uh, superheroes uh, of one sort or another. Um, interestingly enough, none of them superheroes that you are familiar with. Hmm. I'll never understand humanity's ability to just waste so much resources on entertainment. It's not a waste. They need entertainment. It keeps them uh, hale and healthy. Well, you find... Eh, that's, uh, the... my, Steven... my people are quite good at finding our own ways of entertainment without using such resources. I look at just the amount of books on shelves. And... Stevens kind of smiles uh, a bit bemused uh, at the exchange. Uh, weird. Uh, he uh, walks over uh, to the, the nearby table uh, picks up a book off of a stack on the corner uh, and holds it out to you. Um, it's a, a glossy soft cover uh, splashed across the top uh, in uh, bold uh, logo type is The Protectors. Um, and uh, splashed across the cover uh, as though bursting uh, through uh, the cover towards the viewer is a slightly cartoonish uh, drawing of all of you. I'm going to look at it, look up at him. Look at it, look up at him. I started you know, writing The Protectors eight years ago. And oh. here you are. And, hey, is is it what they say on the, on the, the forums true? Am I like a multiversal clairvoyant? 
I have literally I no I idea made, how to answer that question. I thought I just made you up. Was I like, oh man, was I like seeing your like adventures on another earth? That would be so cool. Mm. Oh, Sora that... looks at him and says, you know, you have to uh, ask us if you're going to use our trademark like this. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think like that... Cubans have some type of like proceedings for the stealing of images, right? Yeah, I, I guys, I'm like, I, I certainly never meant to, you know, uh, like, wow, I never meant to like spy on you or anything. Uh, I maybe you're a god. I really, I don't. How would I know? Say your name backwards. Let me see what happens. <laughs> never snad. No, mm. never caram. Caram. Never. No, I don't think so. Well, at least go with a multi for them. Uh, but, but I mean. I've been writing your stories for years and my friend Dan has been drawing them and you're, you're here. It seems like Dan needs a new career. And now, mm, so. Oh man, Dan, he is going to freak out. Is Dan here? Yeah, of course. Of course. I mean, he's not right here. He's, he's doing, was doing an event. I was going to go, check on him but then i heard from people talking about the superheroes who stopped the dragon i couldn't believe it they described you to a t what about this dragon or the giant guy are those guys in your comic books I, no i mean you know the, i mean there was there was a you know a subterranean dragon but they're different have any of your writings been about us in a convention center or any kind no, of multiversal never, travel? No, I mean, now that you think about it, you know, setting a superhero story at a convention center is kind of genius. I mean, all right, easy now. Don't pat yourself on the back too hard. Uh, but you know, I I wish I'd thought of it. So you don't I mean, know so how the story is predicting ends. the future for sure. Then I did, I never came up with this story in the first place. That was a good meatic. And now I'm really confused about whether or not I can write it down. Mm. No, I think it just becomes recursive at that point. Makes you so, more of a reporter than a writer. Yeah, I guess. That's it's honestly a bit of a bummer. I really thought that I had made up something kind of special. I mean, well, not that you guys aren't great. I mean, thanks for thinking we so much of us that you think we're so special, but we do have our lives. Yeah, no, no, I, I get that. I get that. So uh, where, where did you come from? Why are you here? We were about to ask you the same thing. We appeared in a flash of light, and the dragon out there started attacking people, so we stepped in. Huh. Yeah, we haven't really had a chance to get around and get our it? bearings. Uh, well, um, maybe, I don't know, I mean, maybe we can, we can contact the Freedom League or something and see if they can help. I've got to imagine they deal with this kind of thing. Or, hmm. you know... Maybe Dr. Adam knows. I don't know. Well, there is a big glowing green force field around the convention center that's not letting anybody out, so I think we oh. might be on our own. That's that's a problem. Uh, so so what do we do? Hmm. Nobody can get out. No one can probably get in, so I think we got to figure this out on our own. Oh, we could at least call someone to see if they could work on it from the outside. I mean, they might have their own mystics. Uh, yeah, there, there definitely are. Um, I guess, you know, he gestures. There are a lot of people who are sort of milling about, um, uh, mostly, you know, kind of staying within the, their booths or uh, are to the sides of the aisles, although a, a decent-sized crowd is beginning to sort of gather around you. 
um, uh, he notes points, sort of gestures, Stephen's gestures to a bunch of people who are, you know, sort of looking kind of helplessly at their uh, phones. Um, and he, he pulls his out of his pocket. Nobody's been able to get any signal. Uh, I don't know what this is, but it seems to be blocking everything from the outside. Do I get a so, sense that Lewin can take me out of here? Like, if I try to will myself to travel dimensionally, does anything happen? No. Uh, in fact, you think whatever is uh, causing that blockage is also cutting you off from uh, dimensional travel. I'm going to try to open up a portal. Uh, a portal to where? Uh, outside. Um, likewise, uh, Mr. Call, you begin to conjure, um, and there's a swirl of, uh, mystical vapor in the air, uh, that, uh, begins to, to start to expand, uh, and then it just sort of collapses in on itself, uh, and winks out of existence. So Good what try. do we know? Just we then, know that we know that the force. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. There is a loud explosion uh, from the far side of the room. Uh, the central set of doors and a good portion of the wall uh, there blow off uh, and uh, leave a huge jagged hole, uh, through which uh, a giant uh, two-legged mech uh, walks uh, into the hall. Um, it's uh, about maybe 15 feet tall um, with a, a sort of uh, torpedo-shaped uh, uh, cabin or hull uh, on two long mechanical legs uh, with broad, heavy pads. Um, to either side uh, of its main hull are a pair of swiveling gun emplacements. Uh, behind it uh, come uh, several uh, rows of troops uh, that are uh, tall uh, robots of some kind. Um, they are tall and thin, probably uh, a good six and a half, seven feet tall, uh, slightly stooped um, with long, thin limbs uh, and uh, sort of barrelish bodies. Uh, all in sort of a battleship gray uh, with weird looking alien markings of some sort. Uh, each of the robots carries a, a blaster rifle uh, of some sort, uh, and uh, they troop uh, row by row uh, into uh, the room behind the mech, uh, which stomps Damn. forward. Uh, and begins making its way towards you. Uh, you all can select your tokens and roll for initiative. Bum, bum, bum. Steve, make sure to clear the ones I am that going are already to, on there. Yep, yeah, indeed. So that uh, good. Get you, are good to, you are good to roll. Awesome. Uh, right as this is kind of starting to, to take off, I just kind of look at, at Mark and I go, are these familiar to your to your superhero community? Uh, Stevens uh, looks in shock from the uh, the the mech and the troopers to you when you uh, you speak. They're they're the they're the the Robo troops from Vega Four. They're they're from another comic. Is it one of your comics? No, no, it's not mine. Mm. Maybe you should stand behind us, creator, just to be on the safe side. I mean, I don't want anything to happen to him. I don't think we vanish from existence if something does. Yeah, well, I'll, cert I'll certainly want to have some word with you later. All right. And... Once again, uh, the master of all skills, uh, the Ildanak of the Tuatha de Danan, is first to go. Uh, Lou, it is your action. 
Uh, I'm gonna jump on this mech and I'm gonna drive a spear down into the cockpit. All right. With a what? Fifteen to hit because. All right. He thinks we're playing icons and rolling d6s. <laughs> <laughs> Lou leaps into the air uh, and lands on top of uh, the hull of the approaching mech. Uh, driving his uh, glowing spear point uh, through uh, the outer metal uh, of the hull. Uh, it uh, shears through uh, part of the, the metal pretty easily. Um, but beyond that, you're not clear on just how much uh, effect uh, it has had. Uh, the uh, mech continues uh, its slow advance uh, and uh, it then uh, pauses momentarily. Um, Lou, can you give me a fortitude resistance check? It would be my absolute delight. 27. All right, well done. Um, a, uh, a surge of uh, electricity uh, runs uh, through the hull uh, of the of the mech, uh, Lou, you feel your muscles momentarily uh, stiffen uh, and uh, seize uh, as uh, the powerful charge uh, runs through your body. Uh, but you grit your teeth, uh, yanking your spear uh, free uh, with uh, a uh, small amount of of uh, wiring and. Uh, technological debris coming loose with it uh, as you do so. Um, the uh, electrical surge uh, diminishes uh, and uh, stops. Uh, it doesn't affect you. Be careful, comrades. The, AC the ATST has got ACDC. And uh, the uh, pods along either side of uh, the mech begin uh, firing a rapid series of blasts of energy uh, that stitch a line uh, from pretty much directly from uh, the mech towards the group of you. Um, I need uh, everybody but Lou uh, to give me a dodge resistance check, if you would, please. Dodge. Does that include Stevens? Because if it includes Stevens, I'd... is there any way I could throw myself in front of it? Uh, if you... Oh, I should mention courtesy of the last scene in the beginning of this one. Uh, everybody gets another hero point. All right. Um, and uh, if uh, someone wants to interpose uh, for Stevens, they can do so. I'll spend a hero point to get interposed to interpose for Stevens. Okay. Um, All right, so our dodge values, 24, 20, 23. All right, oh. loses. Uh, all right. So uh, I will now uh, need everybody to give me uh, toughness resistance checks. Everyone but Lou uh, succeeded on the dodge check. So most of you will be uh, resisting mm. reduced damage. Not right. that reduced, however. All right. So, uh, Saguaro, uh, you are dazed uh, by the blaster fire. Uh, you take a bruise, and you will be limited to one action. Uh, Atomic Roach, you have no effect. Uh, Lou, uh, you are bruised. Uh, by the blast, but otherwise unaffected. Uh, Volcano, you are bruised by the blast and otherwise unaffected. Uh, Mystical, completely unaffected. Uh, your mystic shield uh, protects you completely. Uh, <clears throat> we'll look back at Stevens and say, that's another thing you owe me, Buster. Uh, thanks. That's right uh, behind me, dead parents. Volcano, it is your action. All right. Um, my fearsome presence. It mentions having 150. It, will that affect? Would that affect everyone within that range, or is it just a single target? 
Uh, let's see. I do believe it is an area effect, but let me see. Yeah, I'm trying to scare off the the entire collection of troops. <laughs> uh, you are fierce in presence. Uh, hmm. I think that that would say so. It is increased range. It is a single target. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so it will not affect all of them. Uh, also, you know from a fair amount of experience that uh, machines may not be affected by it anyway. Yeah, I'd imagine he say probably not. So I'll start moving up. Two, three, six. Yep, and I'll probably pick up one of the tables and throw it right at the mech. All right. Give me a throw check. There we go. Not uh, my first missions! I finally got a good roll. All right. Uh, let's move. Oh, not the neck. Uh, Alex, you want to move Lou back to uh, the rest of the group? I'll put uh, Steven so behind you. Um, all right. So... Uh, Volcano, you uh, grab uh, a pretty heavy-looking uh, display uh, and fling it uh, at the, the mech. Uh, it uh, smashes into the uh, front of it, leaving a good-sized dent, uh, and uh, the, the mech staggers back uh, a bit. Uh, sparks flying uh, from the uh, broken part of the hull uh, from the impact uh, the robo troops advance. Uh, splitting into smaller groups. Just that. And uh, they uh, begin opening fire uh, on the uh, group of you with their blaster weapons. So, uh, Volcano, Lou, and uh, Saguaro, I need uh, toughness checks. Got it. Oh, if I get a bit by toughness, I believe we had a minus two because of the uh, two bruises I have. I can't okay. find, I'm trying to find Noted. a way to reduce that. All right. Um, uh, Lou, you take another uh, bruise. Uh, Volcano, you are unaffected. Uh, a few of the blaster bolts glance off of your rocky hide. Um, weapons. <laughs> um, however, uh, Saguaro, uh, you are uh, hit by a withering combination of blaster fire, um, and uh, you are staggered uh, by the uh, force of the onslaught. And uh, it is Atomic Roach's turn. All right. Um, where I'm at. I want to try to get in the, like a clear line of sight of the mech. So like I guess kind of just moving over to the right just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to lob an atomic bla uh, radiation blast at it. Okay. Mirror attack. Go. Ooh, critical hit. Right. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, Atomic Roach leaps into place, uh, unleashes a searing beam of uh, radiation uh, that basically slags uh, one of the um, mech's uh, legs. Uh, simply shears through it like a hot knife through butter. Uh, the mech uh, 
wobbles and then topples, uh, falling over on its side, uh, crashing onto the floor, concrete floor uh, of the hall. Uh, Mr. Call. All right. Uh, I don't figure they'll be susceptible to it, but I'm going to try just in case. I'm going to use my Swirling Spirits. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is a 30 foot, uh, radius sphere mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to place it where I can get these in front and maybe get the mech as well, mm -hmm. um, without overlapping any of us. Okay. Um, Mr. Carl, uh, in camps. Uh, calling upon uh, the spirits uh, that serve uh, the sixth sun uh, to come forth. And there's a, uh, a sort of pale greenish glow um, as uh, a swirling mass of, of thin howling forms uh, appear out of thin air, whirling through the air. Uh, in a, a tight, almost glowing green cyclone uh, around, uh, centered around the, the mech and around the uh, robo uh, troopers. However, uh, they, uh, the, the glowing green forms pass harmlessly through everything. Um, and the, uh, the robo troopers don't react at all as if um, they don't even perceive them. Um, Take a, uh, uh, Gerald, take a hero point for Mr. Ka, um, but there is no effect. Right. Uh, and it is Saguaro's action. Okay. I am dazed. Um, so let's see here. Hmm. I guess um, I guess what I'm going to do is since I'm dazed I'm going to um, actually take the recover action this round okay And uh, that's it for me, because that's my whole turn. Indeed. <clears throat> All right. Uh, in that case, uh, we are back to lose action. Uh, I'm going to grab a hold of Mr. Stevens, and we're going to leap all the way to the back of the convention center if we can. Okay. Uh, indeed you can. Uh, I'm going to put him safely down behind a booth and say, stay here and stay out of trouble. I'll do my best. Go get him, Lou. And then I will leap, and I think that will be my turn. All right. Uh, the downed mech um, fires uh, the uh, upward-facing um, gun emplacement. Uh, the other one is basically crushed uh, against the floor. Uh, and uh, the remaining one... Uh, seems to uh, have uh, a little bit of a limited uh, field uh, such that it targets uh, atomic roach only. <laughs> uh, so, uh, roach, I need a uh, dodge uh, resistance check, please. I think, I think I'm good. I'm fine. <laughs> All right, dodge resistance. All right, and a toughness check. Ooh, that's not quite as good. <laughs> that's not ideal. That is unfortunate. Do you want to stick with that role, or do you want to use your hero? Yeah, point? I was going to say I want to use my I want to use my hero point since I got another one now. All right, give me another toughness check. All right, let's give that another try. All right, but that, <laughs> that one well, fortunately no, becomes well, an eighteen. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> uh, which is considerably better. 
uh, and uh, you take a, a bruise and you are dazed uh, by the uh, blast uh, from the, the mech's remaining blaster cannon. Uh, that will limit you to uh, one action uh, on your next turn, uh, either a standard or move. All right, uh, Volcano, your turn is next. So I Volcano, why are you next? Your ex yeah, I'm ex dead. I don't know why I'm ex I didn't actually activate that. Oh, you know, come I to think right. of it, if it, I don't know if it makes a difference, but I did still have that negative. I had a hit from uh, the previous encounter. Uh, no, uh, it's okay. still the same damage effect, but thank you for letting me know. Sure. All right. So, yeah, I'm probably because I have no good way of dealing with large groups of troops. Gonna take my five steps forward. This thing doesn't seem very good at dodging. I think I'm going to do an all-out attack. Mm -hmm. An all-attack, I mean, I'm sorry, power attack. Yep. Going for the full five? I think I'm going to go for the full five. I'm going to give it a nice... going to see if I can just kind of dent that big glass cockpit. Got to smash that in. It's actually an opaque metal plate of some kind, but... Oh, well, I uh, assume there's some you... kind of sensor equipment or something in there. Yep, but there's probably something delicate enough to damage. <laughs> Give me your uh, attack check. All right. All right. Um, so um, Volcano pretty much uh, walks up to the, the mech, winds up, um, and puts his uh, superheated fist... Uh, right through it, um, you uh, plunge your uh, hand uh, into the hull, uh, smashing and melting through the outer armor plating. Um, there seems to be all kinds of uh, fairly vulnerable and uh, um, delicate uh, and also uh, not especially heat resistant materials uh, within. Uh, and uh, with uh, one powerful blow, uh, Volcano basically uh, puts a massive uh, steaming crater uh, in the front of uh, the, the mech. Um, parts uh, glowing, slightly molten parts of it are dripping off uh, onto the, the floor, uh, sizzling on the concrete. Uh, the one remaining sort of functioning cannon goes and stops moving. Well, that's the end of that. Now we just have to deal with the troops. Indeed. Like I toss it aside. <laughs> uh, the robo troops uh, continue to advance uh, and continue uh, firing on you. Uh, here. Is the sound of a die hitting the floor. Uh-oh. It doesn't count. I've got another. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, volcano. Uh, I will need a uh, toughness check from you. Uh, and everybody else is missed. That does include the minus two. Okay. Able to that, so uh, in that case, you uh, you shrug off uh, the the blaster bolts uh, from the robots. Uh, they they don't have any effect on your your rocky skin. Uh, Say, and... go ahead. You're gonna need to try harder than that. And uh, atomic roach, it is your action. All right, all right. Well, I can't do a whole heck of a lot. But um, oh, I meant to also ask: Did did uh do I still have the do we still have the fatigues from previously? Uh, no, you can erase your fatigue from the last scene. Okay, um, in which case I'm gonna use uh, extra effort then to specifically I'm gonna do I want to do multi attack against uh, this group of robots that's near me. Okay. So I guess. Well, I have to roll five checks then? Uh, you're going to roll one check 
uh, and I'm going to uh, use it as a, uh, a multi-attack against the group. Okay. Didn't go well. Uh, yeah, that could be better. Uh, I will tell you what, uh, rather than a multi-attack, would you rather treat your uh, power stunt as an area effect? That'd be, yeah, that works for me. Okay. Um, that will slightly lessen, bunch of robots. <laughs> slightly lessen your damage, but uh, these robots, as it turns out, not that great at dodging. Uh, so... Uh, Atomic Roach concentrates uh, and unleashes a, uh, a wide burst of uh, radioactive energy. Uh, it surges out uh, and uh, slams into uh, these robots. There's a loud sort of mechanical squeal, and uh, they are basically all vaporized. Um, they're, you know, glowing and charred. Uh, bits and pieces uh, drop to the floor uh, nearby. Uh, and it is Mr. Carl's action. All right. Uh, I am... Uh, I would like to move over... Oops. move over in this area and I would like to power stunt my uh, my mystic blast mm -hmm. uh, into a selective burst okay that would be a effect rank of eight okay uh, and where are you uh, targeting this group of uh, robots here uh, well, it would be it would be centered on me, and it would go uh, out thirty right. feet. Now that'll get pretty much everybody, I think. Uh, yep, indeed it shall. Uh, and since it is selective, it will not affect volcano or your teammates. Uh, so uh, you said that'll give you an effective rank of eight, I believe. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, so what is, what is, uh, Mr. Call's, uh, burst look like? Uh, it is that, it is similar to the blast. It's that greenish, um, where the blast is just a ray. Mm -hmm. This is just sort of like a, a, a pressure wave that just, mm -hmm. she slams the, the scepter down on the ground and it just spreads from there. All right. Uh, Mr. Call, uh, drops, uh, to the floor slamming the uh, bottom of her uh, scepter uh, against it, uh, a, a glowing green wave of mystical energy washes out in all directions, uh, slams into the robo troopers like a, like a tidal wave. Um, and uh, the first uh, few uh, ranks of them are smashed uh, by the force of it. Uh, they are essentially destroyed. Uh, the remaining ones on the outskirts are damaged, uh, but still uh, up and moving. Uh, and it is Saguaro's turn. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do something similar with spikes, but I guess what I will do instead... Um, is leap over to here, and uh, I'm just going to get this guy with an 18 for 27. Yeah, you basically punch right through him. Uh, one strike uh, smashes him into pieces. And then I will use takedown to get the one next to him. All right. Uh, yep. With a 23 for 27. Same effect. In fact, uh, um, and likewise, do I, take, do I take down or take down two? I forgot. Only take down one. Okay. All right. So that's it. 
I yep. smashed them both. Uh, indeed, you did. Uh, all right, so it is lose action. Oh, much like my friend the Mighty Seguro, I'm going to jump over here into this group of dudes and start spearing fools. All right. Here is a Mighty Lewin stab for a 28 to hit. All right. And that Robo Trooper is finished. And I also have takedown one, so I'm going to stab <laughs> his friend next to him. All right. With a mighty 18 to hit that time. All right. That still hits and also takes out that Robo Trooper. The gun mech is disabled and does not go. Volcano, it is your turn. All right, because there's only one left over here. I'm just going to walk up behind him, give him a tap on the shoulder, and then just crush his head with my hand. <laughs> All right. I mean, the robots, I can do that and not feel terrible. Give I will a... take the all-out attack, so I will have, I'm will. i adding a five to this. Okay. So let me yeah, just add the five. All right. oh, 30, yeah. you say. <laughs> um. Yeah, basically, Volcano just sort of strolls up behind the remaining robot that has its attention focused on Lou, uh, reaches out and grabs uh, its head um, in his uh, hot uh, hand, uh, steam and smoke coming off of the metal as he crushes uh, the robot's metallic head, uh, sparks spray uh, from it as it goes... I love fighting robots. And, I don't feel bad um, about anything. Then the neck and body just sort of drop off uh, and crumple to the floor. Uh, the remaining two robo troopers take shots at Saguaro. Right. Get out of here. Uh, and I will need one toughness check, if you would, please. It's already with the minus two, so. Man, I can't, I can't Oof. roll tonight. I, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear one. That's ridiculous. All right. That's ridiculous. Twenty-four. See, I wanted okay. the three. Oh my god. Twenty-four you, though. Uh, you shrug off the effect. Uh, it's it's a glancing shot. It was almost a lucky shot, but not enough. Uh, and uh, Atomic Roach. Um, all right, well, since I'm still dazed, I guess I'm just going to... Uh... So wait, there's still the one left, right? Or is, no, is it... Uh, is there are just the two that Saguaro is fighting. Oh, Sorry, this guy. Okay. this guy's um, done. Yeah, I'm going to kind of... Like, almost a lot of, like a, like a grenade, you know, overhead. Uh to the to the robot uh adjacent to Squirrel. Mm-hmm. All right. Um Okay. Um just yelling Saguaro, out incoming. Saguaro, a uh, a glowing uh arc of uh, radioactive energy uh surges uh just overhead and in front of you um and corsicates down uh the robot Pretty much melting it down into a puddle at your feet. Can look over at Atomic Roach and nod. Mm. <laughs> and uh, Miss Takal, it is your action. Uh, I'm going to fire a Mystic Blast at the remaining robot. All right. And you destroy it. Um, all right. Everybody add a hero point to your total. All right. Uh, nice. Erase any of your current damage. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, um, the fallen mech and the remains of the robo troopers scattered about the floor uh, and the like shimmer slightly and disappear. I'm going to gather up with my friends and then say, do you ever get the feeling like you're just someone else's entertainment? No, well, it wouldn't be the first time. Um, something tells me this isn't going to be the last of these things, these incursions. 
they show up, cause damage, get beat by us, and then just vanish. Yeah, that tell, okay. that tells me something. Someone is doing this for some reason, fun yeah. or profit. Who knows? Either still way, think I don't this, like it. Honestly, I still think this whole thing's a big cosmic prank or something. Listen, now quirky. we gotta find the source. There's people in danger here. I don't think we can fight. These things keep coming. We can't just keep fighting them off. We're going to get worn mm -hmm. down eventually. From across the room, uh, you hear a loud uh, shout uh, in an angry voice. You! You're the one who's doing this! I heard you! I heard you telling them! <clears throat> uh, you glance uh, to the far side of the hall uh, where uh, Mark Stevens... Uh, is uh, backed up against uh, one of the, the tables. Uh, a big, uh, burly guy, um, kind of heavy set, uh, and it ha basically has him uh, by a handful of the, the front of his shirt um, and is, is looming over him, uh, screaming in his face, whatever you're doing, make it stop! Uh, Stevens has his uh, hands uh, raised slightly to his side in protest. I, I, I don't know what it, I don't know what it is. I, I really, man, I have no idea. Um, Boy, leave I'm him gonna, alone. Yeah, I think we yeah, got to get into, into this. I'm gonna march right over there to him. Yeah. Yeah, step between you, like. Um, the. Um, Guy um, looks up uh, as you uh, looks over as you approach, um, and uh, then a sort of wild eyed uh, looks glances back at at Stevens, and he he grabs Stevens in a, a, a chokehold, um, holding his his arm uh, around his neck, holding Stevens uh, in front of him. Stay back, you freaks! I don't know where you came from. Never seen you before. Now, friend, but I know we're, not that, we're not that different from your Freedom League. We're just, we're here to help. I know he said he created you. He's we're doing still working this. that part out. I'm going to go up to him, like, uh, I'll roll intimidation and say, exactly. So if he really, if he created us, do you really want to, do you really want to mess, mess with him? <laughs> All right. Give me an intimidation check. <clears throat> Can I aid his intimidation? Yes, you may. And uh, I, not that it looks like he needs it, but I will, uh, I will uh, walk, I'll walk up next to the guy and without saying a word, I'll just lock eyes with him and let my spines grow out a bit. Yes. <laughs> um, there's, there's a long pause and uh, uh, Mark Stevens is like, yeah. Do you really want to mess with me? Feeling <laughs> not now, Mark. Settle down. <laughs> Please, the, Hammer. Don't hurt him. The uh, the guy loosens his grip slightly. We we, we got to get out of here. Working on it. Just be patient. Um, Stevens. Uh, manages to sort of push the guy's arm away slightly, um, pulling free of his grip. <laughs> Look, Roger, if I, if I know one thing, protectors aren't going to stop until everybody's safe. Let them, let them do what they do. I trust them. You should too. Steve, is there an abundance of security cameras in this room? Uh, there are, um, hmm. but I depends on your definition of an abundance. There are enough to have a you know pretty clear view of the inside of the room from you know a, a secure uh, security station in the like convention should, center. It's kind of weird. Security hasn't intervened in any of this. Maybe I we think go check maybe on security. Is, yeah, I think whoever is watching us, maybe watching from wherever the security footage is, because they made those bodies disappear as soon as they were unconscious. <clears throat> Would also explain how these things keep appearing and wherever we move to. Yeah. 
Uh, I guess we should find out where the security room for this place is. If there is actual security, they're probably on the level of mall cops. Probably not dragon material. I guess. Mm. Not even still, you think at least they try to come to help some people. At least they try. At least they. At least we'd see them try. At least we'd see them trying to run out and try to give an explanation of the situation. In fact, we've seen nothing of them. Or at least try to flee. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Also, any air ducts in the room or in the general you know, vicinity? Uh, there are vents, to be sure. Uh, most of them are air vents are pretty high up. Uh, the the ceiling of the room is is cavernous. Uh, it's easily thirty feet high. Hmm. Well, let's Can grab an admin. Try to find it. Try let's to find grab an employee room. and have them guide us to the security office. Sounds yeah. like a good lead to start with. Right. Uh, to be sure, uh, there is uh, some convention staff uh, in the the hall. Uh, they're uh, wearing, uh, uh, you know, nylon multicolored uh, uh, jerseys uh, that uh, proclaim them uh, working for the uh, Indianapolis Convention Center uh, and the like. Uh, and you have no difficulty um, finding a, a, a young woman um, who uh, is happy to uh, take you to the um, security office if you want. Um, she says uh, that uh, it's uh, on the second floor, uh, and uh, she can show you where it is. That would be lovely. Thank you. Um, she uh, takes you uh, outside uh, to uh, the uh, set of, she says, do you want to take the stairs or the elevator? I think the stairs are probably safer. Safer, indeed. Um, she uh, takes you out um, through uh, the pretty much the hole in the wall uh, that the mech left um, to a, uh, a corridor uh, that faces um, the, uh, the top part of the convention center. Uh, there's a there's set of stair, sets of stairs. Um, uh, there's one set uh, off uh, to one side, and I'll uh, relocate you. You can maybe at least see the security cameras. There's any footage of someone doing any kind of magical ritual or something to summon this? Well, we already determined that it's probably not magical. Well, it's certainly something, whatever it is. Technology, magic, cosmic powers, base imps, whatever. It is interfering with the divine ability of myself to pass back and forth. So, off to your side, uh, there is a, uh, a set of uh, st- a broad stairwell uh, to the left. Um, Naomi, the uh, staff member, uh, takes you uh, down the, the wide corridor uh, to, the, to the stairwell. And uh, you can see just from the foot of the stairs that uh, a glowing green energy field bisects the stairwell uh, near the top, uh, effectively uh, cutting off access to the second floor. Hmm. Oh, uh, just to mention, uh, we still have the fog of war, so I can't see the actual section uh, right I now. I should uh, reveal that in a second. Uh, how's that? Uh, still, we, I guess uh, I st- we can see this area. Yeah, see the uh, stairwell. Yeah, I don't see. Uh, like, uh, over, there we go. There we go now. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, honestly, I was hoping to test my strength against one of these barriers. We haven't really actually tried interacting with it. Let's let's try hitting it all at once. Can't hurt. <laughs> I look at Mystical. Do you think that's accurate? That it won't hurt. <laughs> <laughs> start cracking uh, my knuckles. <laughs> this is not magic, so I don't There's really know. No way of knowing. Right behind you, volcano. All right. <laughs> As I give it a, 
I guess I'll probably, uh, because I think this thing has a dodge, so I'll probably put it all into power attack. All right. Um, uh, that did not reveal the way I wanted it to. I was like, don't worry about me, Roach. Put as much radiation as you want behind this. I, I'm not no danger. All right. Um, so what do you hit the field with? I'm just going to try punching it straight up and just try for as much heat and energy as I can behind my blow. All right. Uh, using a power attack, being I assume it's not dodging. It, it does not, in fact. Um, <laughs> uh, Volcano, you, uh, you punch the, the glowing uh, field uh, with all of your might, uh, but it seems completely unaffected. Well, <laughs> certainly sturdy. Try maybe some other types of energy. Uh, Roach, you got want to give it a nice radiation? Yeah, I shake my hands and I charge up and I just give it like a, a big old blast of, of as much radiation as I can muster. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Atomic Roach, you unleash a, a glowing radiation beam, uh, bright uh, sort of gr greenish light, almost blinding in its intensity. Um, it sears against the, the energy field, um, but again, seems to have no effect. Hmm. All right, you're all going to want to talk to your doctors sometime. Uh, oh, I'll be fine. Get, like, a cat scan or something. Um, I guess like, well, I can see how far low it goes down. I'm going to try digging out the, using my strength to kind of rip out a part of the floor to see if it goes, see if it goes into the ground. Um, the, uh, the flooring, uh, on the, the bottom level of the, um, convention center is basically concrete, um, which is certainly not beyond your ability to tear yeah. into, uh, so far as that goes, um, digging, uh, uh, where are you going to dig? Probably just, like at a, probably diagonal. I'm just trying to see if it, just see how low this thing goes down, see if this thing goes down even if it goes down, like probably a foot, I'll assume it goes down for probably ever. Mm -hmm. It appears it goes down for at least as far as you have torn up. I'm like, well, don't know how deep it goes, but I think it goes a bit beyond what digging can provide. Well, mm -hmm. whoever's put this thing in place has some kind of master plan for us, so let's just keep looking for the culprit. Just all right. Well, we can maybe at least try interviewing. We try interviewing some of the people in the convention. The person may be, might be hiding inside here and um, incognito. We should go look for that Johnny Rocket guy again. Maybe he saw something when the dragon appeared. Yeah, maybe. Not the worst idea. Uh, it's not... Well, it actually takes a little doing because there are a bunch of guys dressed like Johnny Rocket. A couple uh, of girls, too, <laughs> yeah. apparently. I'll just assume um, it's the same, per the same person as the first person I run into. <laughs> this must be like the most popular superhero in this universe. But... Um, you are uh, able uh, to eventually find uh, the uh, the guy who first talked to you. Um, most uh, uh, people seem to have uh, taken uh, shelter in the, the the exhibit hall and are doing their you know best to both stay put and stay calm uh, at the moment. Um, you do find uh, as well a few of the. Um, uh, security guards uh, who work for the convention center. Um, they, uh, they are very clearly out of their depth. Yeah, um, and, and at the moment are doing their best uh, to keep everybody calm and uh, telling them to sit tight for the time being uh, until the situation can be assessed and help can arrive uh, so far as that goes. Um, so yeah. So you guys have radios. Uh, you guys have anywhere? Can you contact the people on the other side, the, the security room? Uh, they have attempted uh, to do so, uh, but uh, they uh, radios don't appear uh, to work. Uh, they don't appear. To, they don't appear to reach any point outside, and they can't contact anyone on the second floor. Hmm. Um, the only uh, thing that the uh, security uh, personnel can uh, report is uh, that the out entire exterior of the building, as far as they know, 
seems to be surrounded by that strange green energy field. It's cut off access to the second floor and uh, to the middle of the arena uh, to the uh, north of the convention center. There's an arena, you say? Yeah, of course. That feels like the kind of place that whoever is in charge of this wants us to go. Can you get to it, though? We can't get to it from the field. Um, Well, uh, one of the security guards says, uh, we can get to the arena, but there's something in the middle of it surrounded by that same barrier. Oh. Um, Like another one inside of this one? Uh, That's what... That's what we were told. Hmm. Well, maybe we could. Well, take us there. Again. You mentioned you, you mentioned there was vents earlier. I feel like mm-hmm. just kind of around the vents and feel if air is coming through. Uh, no. Like well, they even cut off the air. So whatever this is is entirely surrounding space in the dome. It also puts a timer on us here, too, because eventually we're going to run out of air. Then. That's a good point. Hmm. I probably shouldn't be using so much heat. I don't want to burn up all the oxygen. We should get to that arena. There's got to be something yeah. about that at other bubble. Yep, let's go. Let's go. Yeah, let's go knock it over. See what, we've, see what we're dealing with here. Roll it around. All right. Um... One of the uh, security guards uh, takes you uh, through uh, this corridor here. Um, there are uh, a uh, there's a long there's a set of uh, steps, a long curved hallway that makes its way past a number of, of conference rooms and other areas along the sides. Um, around the far side of the uh, circle is an entrance uh, into uh, a large uh, arena area. Thus. Hmm. Um, Within, uh, there's uh, a large uh, overlooking walkway uh, and uh, a uh, ring, uh, succeeding concentric rings of uh, seating that overlook the central arena area itself. Um, it looks as though um, the floor of the arena below has been set up um, for some kind of activity. There are tables uh, laid out at regular intervals all along the arena. Mm. Um, and um, there are, uh, there's a sort of dome of glowing green light uh, in the middle uh, that encompasses that part of the floor of the arena. Hmm. Uh, the, glo- the glowing dome is, is largely opaque, uh, so you can only see some shadowy uh, shapes uh, inside of it. Are any of those shadowy shapes moving? No, nothing appears to be moving. All right. Uh, they, uh, this area has basically been evacuated. Uh, people are mostly taking shelter in the nearby uh, offices or uh, security is already moving them uh, to the exhibit hall area. Is the dome transparent? Like, can we see inside of it? It is not. It is largely opaque. Uh, You can see a couple of small, dark shadows inside that might be some of the tables or the like uh, that it encompasses, but it's hard to see much of anything through it. I think I might have an idea. I'm going to knock, walk down to the dome. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm going to knock on it, like, uh, kind of hard to make sure that the people, if anything's inside of it, can hear it with just kind of a, a set of, 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 of clearly patterned knocks that are meant to invoke that they are, a, that it is a person or something doing it on the other side. See if someone right. responds. Um, you hit the, the, the dome, um, 
it almost has a uh, it has a very firm, solid, but almost slightly springy feel to it. Um, and uh, the 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 sound of the your knocks echoes sort of hollowly uh, from inside. Uh, you wait for a, a long moment, uh, but there's n nothing but silence. Either no one's in there or they don't want to respond. Try shaving a haircut two bits. <laughs> uh, I kind of I try to think through that and just kind of tap try tapping it out. Mm -hmm. You uh, tap uh, out the 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 knocks, but no, there's still nothing. Yeah, really don't want to answer. Well, we know I that they're not I cartoons. Try something. Uh, Saguaro, Roach, can you watch my body and make sure nothing eats it or no one steals it? Um, I'll be back in a minute. Uh, and I'm going to try to astral project into the dome. Okay. Uh, Mr. Carl, you, you sink down uh, into a, a seated cross-legged pose on the floor. Uh, your mystic scepter held between your two hands. Uh, it's uh, head uh, just in front of your, uh, your bowed head, uh, allowing your eyes uh, to close. Uh, you feel uh, your, your, the, your astral form slip the bonds uh, of your, your material body uh, and uh, uh, your ghostly spirit uh, emerges uh, into the, the arena chamber, uh, floating weightlessly uh, over uh, to the glowing dome, uh, you uh, easily uh, pass uh, through its uh, surface. And then suddenly uh, there's a uh, blinding flash of greenish light uh, as though the light of the dome expands and is everywhere. Uh, all of you see this sudden glowing light that blind, fills your vision for a moment. Uh, and then, uh, when it clears, uh, you all find yourselves uh, standing, uh, if standing is the appropriate term, uh, in a, a most bizarre uh, 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 psychoscape, um, a, a weird uh, realm of glowing, floating shapes. Um, if you take a look at the background behind a pook, um, it's probably not all that different from that. Um, weird bands and bridges of material seem to float uh, unbound through the air. Glowing rings of light uh, drift past. Uh, distant uh, suns seem to sparkle and shimmer uh, in the blackness beyond. Uh, and uh, the whole of it uh, is, is endless. It seems to go on forever in every direction. Uh, you're all standing fairly close together, um, but uh, some of you might be uh, on the um, uh, underside of uh, a, a, a ramp or a piece of material. Gravity seems to be largely random or arbitrary. Uh, or at the very least, more about where your feet are than anything else. Uh, Mr. Kahl, you uh, would say uh, that you are uh, in uh, what uh, some uh, would refer to as uh, the, the iconosphere, um, or uh, a depth, uh, the deep astral uh, plane. Uh, a realm of, of consciousness given form, uh, or in some cases, the unconscious given form. Uh, have I had any experience with this before? Some. Uh, like all mystics, uh, you have ventured uh, into uh, the, the iconosphere uh, from time to time. Uh, it is it is a very dangerous realm. Um, it is a, a place uh, where uh, the the very deepest uh, 
aspects of, of the, the psyche can uh, become very real uh, and you can encounter manifestations of your deepest fears or desires. Um, it's uh, some said by some to be a realm of ultimate temptation or nightmare uh, and uh, is, is a risky place to go at best. Uh, have I heard anything that would indicate that someone uh, who goes into the iconosphere could manifest things from their subconscious, maybe outside? You've heard of uh, occasional uh, stories of that sort. Um, but you've never seen uh, an actual manifestation of it. Theoretically, it's possible. All right. Uh, I'm going to have a quick look around and see if I can see anything that appears to be a, uh, a, another consciousness, uh, something that is, acting in some kind of way that indicates mm -hmm. that uh, there's some kind of mind behind it. Um, you peer out uh, through the, the uh, vista of, of the iconosphere more with your reaching out with your mystical senses, really, rather than uh, your eyes. And uh, in the, the near distance, uh, you see uh, a, a broad sort of floating plateau of sorts. Um, and uh, you see uh, some flickers, uh, almost like uh, lightning uh, in the depths of thunderclouds. Uh, and uh, you sense a powerful mind uh, there. No, wait, two, two powerful minds, very close together. All right, and and I do I see everyone else? Yep, everyone else is fairly close at hand. All uh, right. Whatever whatever drew you in here was so powerful, uh, it has effectively pulled uh, the astral forms of your teammates in here with you. Oh, well, this is uh, <clears throat> new. Huh. So, is, is mystics have always like this? Yeah, it's pretty much always like this. Uh, back in my body, a... please. Oh, it'll be I, fine. We're we're I, all. I have living. been here once before. Indeed, uh, Saguaro, this reminds you very much of a vision journey that uh, you took. Exactly. After my transformation, my teacher Crow took me to a secret holy place and took me deep, deep into the mind world a place just like this. And I was shown different paths. I could not change the fact that I had become this cactus being. But the paths I saw were paths that I could create, and I knew that. And this place, that showed it to me before I came back. So the things that you want to see, and perhaps the things that you need to see, will be shown to you here. Whether you choose them or not, it's up to you. Mm. There are two very powerful consciousnesses over that way. And I'll, I'll point out the plateau and say, I think we should go there. All right. Yeah, um, I think you guys are right. Probably best we try talking to them first. I'm worried we might spook and it might make things worse. Go nice look over at Roach. And, and smoothly. I'm going to say to everybody, but I'm going to look at Roach. I'm going to say any beings that we encounter here should be treated with the utmost respect. And well, that's what oh, I was just saying. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, let's not pick any fights we don't have to. As sad as that is. All right. <clears throat> Uh, everybody add one hero point to your total. 
<laughs> Following uh, the uh, winding and twisting uh, floating pathway uh, through the iconosphere, uh, occasionally uh, leaping uh, short broken spans that seem to drop away into an endless dark abyss. Uh, you uh, quickly make your way uh, towards uh, the, the broad floating plateau. Uh, its surface uh, appears uh, to be uh, hewn from rock uh, and there are numerous uh, columns, uh, uh, sort of uh, like ancient ruins standing in various spots, some of them intact, others uh, sheared in half so that they're a little more than stumps in places. Uh, the central part of the uh, plateau uh, drops away a bit uh, and uh, is, uh, has a bit of almost sort of a bowl-like depression in its midst. And uh, in, there, in that uh, space, uh, there's a uh, man, uh, fairly average-looking guy, um, a uh, little on the heavy set side, um, heavy metal t-shirt, uh, jeans, uh, and the like, uh, who is, uh, standing there, uh, his, his hands clenched in fists at his side. Uh, his head is, is down, his eyes tightly closed, uh, in, as if in concentration, uh, and, uh, that is uh, far less strange uh, than uh, the, uh, the ghostly image of uh, a giant brain uh, that appears to be hovering above him, uh, almost like a cloud uh, in uh, the shape of a cerebellum. Um, it has uh, a uh, sort of ghostly trailing nerve ganglia uh, at its base, uh, and uh, in front of uh, its frontal lobes are a pair of narrow, glowing uh, yellow eyes uh, that burn with a blazing, almost electrical light. Um, the same uh, sort of crackling light, that strange, almost lightning uh, that uh, you uh, saw, Mr. Kahl, seems to flicker through the depths of the brain's structure, almost as though you can see its, its synapses firing uh, and glowing. And the air around you, if, if indeed it is air, it seems to be, um, it feels potent with a, a almost powerful electrical charge. There's a palpable energy uh, that is, is flowing uh, between the two. So, Goro, mm -hmm. mate, I know you said we needed to respect everything we came across, but that's... That's... I can't think of a proper word for it. Weird. Yeah, that is that is a weird shirt that man is wearing. Oh, also there's a brain. Uh, you, as you take in the, the strange tableau, you hear uh, a quiet voice. Please... Please help. And it's not with your ears, but you hear it in your minds. And then a much louder psychic voice, one that, that's almost deafening at first, uh, speaks. Ah, so the protectors, a childish ploy. to summon hopeful heroes to protect you. It will not be successful. Yield your mind to me. I promise there will be no pain. Indeed, you may find the experience of union pleasant. Uh, no pain. Well, wish I could keep wish I could make that promise, but I can't. Yeah, I think uh, Roach kind of just leaps into action. Uh, yeah, to, like, probably punch am. the brain. 
<laughs> the brain. All right. Squirrel was all like, oh, mighty brain, let us discuss. Never mind. Stabs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Why don't uh, you select your tokens on the map? Give me some initiative. My first item is real great on initiative. <laughs> There's no one going great initiative. Except for Atomic Roach. Oh, oh. Yeah. Like well that. done. Good job, Roach. All right. I was really incensed by the this thing preying on this person. Yeah. All right. So, Atomic Roach, uh, you uh, leap uh, into action. Um, are you uh, hitting or blasting uh, the brain um i mean i guess yeah i guess realistically roach would try to blast but i don't know what happens on this like plane oh you still have resistance. all of your normal abilities due to oh, your okay. personal self-image here um, I thought this might have been a way that i find out that i don't um <laughs> why do yeah, i have I'm gonna, I'm gonna straight up has to blast do your personal self-image uh Atomic Roach uh, unleashes a glowing green blast of energy uh, that uh, passes through uh, the the translucent image uh, of the of the brain. Uh, there's uh, almost a, a faint crackle of of contempt uh, in the air. Foolish figments, as though you could affect the outcome of this battle. Uh, guys, I don't think I can do anything here. Hmm. Uh, Lou, it is your action. Uh, and that that guy with the the guy with the t-shirt, he's still here, yep. right? Yep. Uh, I'm gonna go over to him and spark a light on Lewin, and mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a hand on his shoulder, and I'm going to try and channel my positive energy and my self belief in myself into him. All right, uh, you can give me a will check. I'm going to say that as the Lord of Light and the Master of Skills, there's nothing that you can't do by yourself, Grand Creator. And I'm going to spend a hero point because that sucks. I rolled my life. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I want this to be really cool. Okay, okay. Come on, roll 20. Cooperate. All right, so... Yeah. 13. 23. <clears throat> uh, well, your second roll was a 13, right? Right, but it's a 3 on the dice, so doesn't that kick Oh, it it's a 3 on the dice. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, Lou, you can feel uh, energy uh, almost palpably flowing uh, from your uh, touch uh, into uh, the, uh, the man's shoulder. Uh, he, he straightens up slightly, his head lifting a bit, <clears throat> uh, and the, uh, the lightning flickering within the depths of the, the floating brain intensifies, uh, it becomes brighter and faster. And I will this, defiance is, this defiance is useless. Yield to the cosmic mind. Your power is nothing as compared to mine. Uh, he the he sort of scrunches up his his eye his concentration. It's 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 too much. I'm so tired. It's just a brain, mate. It's not even in a jar. All right, uh, Mr. Carl, your action. Uh, I'm going to try something. It's probably not going to work, but uh, we'll see if the big brain is sleepy as well. Uh, I would like to power stunt my sleep spell mm -hmm. uh, and change that from an area effect to a uh, perception effect. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And let me see if I can get this to, nope, I don't know how to do that. Um, let me see, how do I get it to just pop out? Well, I'll do this, it'll be the same DCs. Okay, noted. Um, you uh, cast your enchantment uh, and a uh, sort of sparkling cloud uh, of uh, streamers extends uh, out uh, to brush around the, the surface of the, the cosmic mind. Uh, and uh, there's a sudden uh, all at once flash of synaptic energy uh, within it uh, that blasts the uh, streamers of uh, enchanted mist apart. <clears throat> I can see that I will have to deal with this useless distraction before I can complete my work. Uh, and the surface of the uh, floating uh, plateau begins to rumble uh, and shake. Uh, cracks begin to split it apart, uh, running across its surface. Uh, Volcano, it's your action. All right, so I guess at least we do have an idea that we can at least physically affect it in some way, if it does seem to be intangible. That's why I got a really good will save. Hmm. You mentioned that the brain has like a big eye or something? Two, actually. There's two big glowing right. eyes right in front. Okay, so there are eyes on it, so it does at least need vision. They, they actually kind of float slightly in front of its surface. All right. I'm going to try and... It, it, so there's rocks and stuff around the area? Oh, yeah. All sorts of rocks all over the place. Okay, I'm going to try to take two big rocks and try to get near where those eyes are and smash them both straight together to dust and trying to... I assume I'll have to probably do a, use a, a hero point for the to do an alternate power of trying to create an obscuring... using the dust to create an obscuring fog to block its vision. Okay, sounds good. Uh, you uh, seize uh, a couple of uh, big chunks of rock uh, as the, the plateau continues to shake um, leaping uh, up, you smash them together with tremendous force, uh, and a, a cloud of dust uh, spreads out uh, around you. Um, uh, Lou, um, the man you're standing next to, uh, lifts his head and opens his eyes for a moment. It stopped for a second. I, I, I don't know how to stop it. I've been trying to hold it off, but it's so, it's so powerful. Just focus, mate. You're going to be all right. Are, 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 you, are you real? <laughs> I'm just as real as that thing that you're fighting. Well, that doesn't tell me much. I think I'm losing my mind, but uh, I got to say, I'm pretty glad to see you. Does he look like Mark Stevens? Uh, no, actually, he doesn't look anything like Stevens. Hmm. You know, you're you're uh, a little taller than I expected. I am a god. Yeah. Well, sure. I mean, so can can you get us out of here? That is beyond my divine capabilities. I was afraid you were going to say that. But I know you can get us out of here. Oh, it's... Uh, it's... Uh, starting again. Uh, he uh, I'll drops... i hand. He, uh, in fact, crumples down, drops down to one knee, um, clutching your hand in a, a vice-like grip. Uh, one... He, hand pressed up against his his temples Ugh, make it stop yield and 
it will end. Saguaro, it's your action. Okay. Let's see here. I think... Uh, now, we've seen that it is possible to affect this thing physically. It's not like just I an I think it wasn't tangible, at least based on what happened with the Mammoth Roach, but... All right. Then in that case, does it look like it's physically entwined with that guy? Does it have like ganglia sticking into his body? Or no, there don't. There doesn't appear mental? to be any kind of visible connection between them. But you you sense there is a powerful flow of energy, for lack of a better term, between them. Uh, although right now it is it is largely all coming from the cosmic mind and a, just a tremendous force that is practically burying uh, the other guy down to the ground. Okay. I am going to uh, extra effort to mm-hmm. change one of my attacks so that um, it has the effects insubstantial mm-hmm. um, modifier onto it. And I'm going to try to do a, instead of, I'm going to rework my thunderclap power so that instead of an area effect, mm-hmm. it affects a single target mm-hmm. and um, has Effects insubstantial. And uh, so I'm, and what I'm going to do is I see that they're connected mentally. And although I can't physically see the connections between them, I know that they're there. I can mm-hmm. sense them. So what I'm going to try to do is take my thunderclap ability yep. and basically what you guys see is I reach my hands out into this crazy psychoscape that we're in and I actually draw some of its cosmic energy onto my hands. You can actually see me like grab some of it with my thorns and like pull it, pull it onto me with my cactus thorns. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to face this brain thing and I'm going to clap it right at him. All right. So, um, Saguaro uh, draws in glimmering bits uh, of, of energy, uh, like, uh, like gathering like starlight uh, onto uh, his spines, onto his hands. Uh, he claps them with a thunderous blast, uh, and uh, the, the cosmic mind shocked. It, what? Uh, and... Uh, the, you see the, the cosmic mind literally blink. Uh, its, its eyes momentarily uh, vanish uh, as the, the glowing light blinks out um, and it uh, visibly uh, winces uh, from uh, the, the force. Um, the uh, man holding your hand, Lou, again, sort of like breathes a sigh uh, and like lifts his his head up he smiles uh for the the first time and he's like that's right uh the cosmic uh, mind's uh telepathic voice echoes impossible hey where my heroes are concerned nothing is impossible all right. You all get two hero points. All right. And uh, he uh, clambers uh, to his feet. It is time to end this, the Cosmic Mind's voice says. Uh, and the uh, plateau rumbles again, uh, literally begins cracking apart uh, pieces of it starting to drift away from each other. Uh, You can see uh, just a vast, empty void uh, beneath it. Um, For several of you, uh, large chasms are opening as pieces of the uh, 
plateau or moving further apart. Uh, Lou, you and uh, the uh, uh, Dan, that's his name, uh, just so I can keep refer- not referring to him as the guy, um, is uh, are the only two standing on the same uh, piece of ground at the moment. Oh wait, Dan. Dan was the artist. Um. <laughs> I, said, I remember I said Dan needs a new job because his art kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you don't think say that right now. now? We just got a self esteem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't need to talk about that right now. <laughs> yeah, the guy who's art is terrible. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Atomic Roach, it is your action. All right. Um, so everything's kind of breaking apart. Thing seems like it's on the ropes a bit. I'd also, uh, I'd like to see if I could, I don't know, power stunt to be able to, like, I'm trying to figure out how to say this, basically modify my radiation to try to affect an insubstantial? Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to take that fatigue on for that. Or actually, no, I have a, I have a hero point. I'm gonna, yeah, you I'm have gonna, a hero point. You have yeah, that, too. I'm going to give this a try, and I'm going to use potentially use my hero point to recover. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave right. it at that. All right. You're going to go with the 14? Yep. Okay. Um, You uh, unleash your uh, radiation blast, uh, but uh, something deflects it uh, just before it reaches uh, the cosmic mind. uh, And uh, the the blast just sort of uh, splatters uh, against some invisible force. Uh, Lou, it is your action. So it seems to be physical now. We can hit it. <laughs> right. So I am going to raise my spear, and I'm going to clench Dan's hand a little harder and say, with your power, we can do anything. And I will spend a hero point to power stunt uh, the spear of light to turn it from a physical spear into a glowing spear of light that affects insubstantial. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I will chuck it at the uh, at the big brain. All right. Give me your attack check. And we'll see what Roll20 has to say about this. Here we go. Well, two, uh, 21 to hit. Okay. Uh, Lou flings Lewin the spear of light, uh, and uh, it uh, strikes the cosmic mind uh, right between uh, it, the its glowing eyes. Uh, a telepathic shriek uh, of pain echoes uh, through your minds uh, as uh, the spear uh, appears to just lodge uh, inside the, the sort of cloud of the, the brain's image, glowing brightly, uh, simply uh, stuck there. <clears throat> and uh, Miss Takal, it is your action. Uh, I'm going to take the cue and I am going to power stunt an effects insubstantial on my mystic blast. All right. Oh, look, quickly hit. Uh, uh, Mr. Carl, uh, gestures, uh, sweeping with her hands and her mystic scepter gathering up the glowing, misty energy uh, of the iconosphere uh, and channeling it uh, into a uh, powerful uh, blast of energy. Uh, It lances out uh, and strikes uh, Lou's glowing spear uh, that glows brighter and brighter uh, until uh, it becomes blinding. Uh, all of you uh, have to uh, throw up uh, an arm or look away uh, from it. Uh, there's a, a, a sheer white light uh, and a scream uh, that seems to go on uh, forever. Uh, and then suddenly, you're all awake. Uh, you sit up uh, on the floor of the arena. The glowing green dome is gone. Uh, and uh, Dan Alexander, uh, the artist uh, for the protectors, uh, is uh, 
on the floor uh, of the arena below. Mr. Call, you're uh, the closest to him at the moment. Uh, he oh, picks himself up. Oh. Thank you. You're welcome, but uh, uh, what wow. was all this? You, you really are here. Whenever someone's in need, we're always there. Wow. Uh, I, I can't believe it. I, I thought I was... <laughs> I thought I was losing my mind. But now that everything's all said and done, you really need to work on your art. Yeah. Uh, I think I've got a lot to work on, honestly. That... That brain thing said that I said that I was like a, a conduit uh, into uh, the iconosphere. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's why she wanted to try and control me that I could I could pull things out of it. Controlling you would give it control over the iconosphere. And the things in there. Yeah. I I held it off, and I I guess I was thinking the whole time. I really <laughs> really wished you guys were there. How are you feeling now? Uh, I've got a mother of all headaches, but okay, I think. Uh, so if these domes might have been created by you. Uh, maybe you could let them out. Uh, sadly, its air is not really getting it as long as they're up. Uh, I think they're gone. Huh. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess the dome around us is gone. <laughs> maybe the conventions. Yeah, I, I don't feel as much, I don't know, pressure. Uh, I, th I, I, I don't know how much of that was me and how much of that was the the cosmic mind making me do stuff no well, probably remain a mystery but yeah I, uh, yeah should probably lay down and rest i'm certain you got the, i'm certain you got the mother of all headaches yeah i feel like i could sleep for a week i do i don't know how to thank you guys that you tried to send us home here. yeah yeah i can Definitely. Yeah, I can try that. Back into the simulation, whatever we are. Um, and, hey, if you have any control over it, maybe you can reinstate and state me as a prince. Hey, man, I'll do what I can. for. But, you know, for what it's worth, Mark had this kick-ass plan for how you were going to take care of... Well, I don't know. Should I tell you spoilers? Uh, no, no spoilers. Oh, but, I don't myself, but we need to talk me, about the outfit. Let me just tell you, More General orange. Gorn is toast. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Let me let me see if I can I can do this. Um thanks, guys. Uh I I know it's gonna kinda sound you know weird coming from a middle aged guy who draws funny books for a living, but uh, you guys are my heroes. Well, just well, glad we could help. We come from you. Um, and the other Dan, guy. Dan Alexander closes his eyes, and the protectors fade away back to wherever they came from. <laughs> Where exactly that is remains a mystery. Well Woo. done, heroes. Thank you. You have yeah. saved the people of Icon uh, and uh, restored at least a few uh, people's faith in heroes. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed themselves. Very uh, much. Thank you. Heck yeah. yeah it was uh, fun. This uh, adventure uh, completes a, an odd little crossover uh, that I started a few months ago by uh, statting up the original uh, members of the Freedom League uh, for Icon's superpowered role-playing over on my Icon's Patreon. 
Um, and uh, I figured fair being fair, um, that uh, it was only right that I stat up uh, some of the heroes from icons uh, for mutants and masterminds uh, and uh, give uh, the uh, folks from that Patreon uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, meet them. So uh, we'll uh, share the uh, character sheets uh, and the like uh, on, the, on the Patreon uh, for folks who are interested. Uh, and of course, uh, it gave me a great opportunity to uh, highlight uh, our uh, convention center danger zone, uh, where, from uh, whence comes our map, uh, and uh, to uh, highlight uh, a little of the work of uh, Jacob Blackman's uh, super-powered uh, bestiary, which uh, conveniently provided me with the stats for a red dragon and a frost giant uh, when I, I needed them for uh, a quick adventure. Uh, for folks who may not be familiar, uh, 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 Superpowered Bestiary is one of those annoying books uh, because I really wish I had thought of it first, uh, <laughs> but I didn't. Uh, so uh, Jacob uh, did an awesome job uh, with it, and it is a terrific uh, giant monster manual, one might say, um, for mutants and masterminds. Uh, and is a great resource. I highly recommend. I, uh, I love all of his SPL. Yes, work. I wish yes. I have a copy of it. That, that whole line is great. Yes. The, uh, the Super Powered Legends book, which is the not Marvel stat book, is great. Yes. <laughs> yes, is also uh, super helpful. I remember reading that, not knowing that it was supposed to be not Marvel. Like, man, all these characters just seem like Marvel characters. <laughs> these characters seem <laughs> super familiar. Yeah. Listen, listen, listen. Yeah, this... Jacob is incredible, but Steve Kenson, you outdid yourself with this. This was amazing to watch and, and be a part of. Everybody was just, it was just really, I mean, it was moving. It was really, really great. Uh, very, very well done. So uh, before we wrap up, did anybody have any questions, anything they wanted to share, uh, whatnot? Are we going to get this as an astonishing adventure? Well, maybe. Uh, I might write it up as one. That would be fun. <laughs> Very meta. One is certainly astonished. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to you know, run by Alex and see. You know, what he thinks. So I don't know, Kenson. I don't know if you got the writing credits for this. Right? You know, I get it. I get it. You know. Steve's Look at that, one. Steve. You brought the ladder up for me, and now I'm ripping it up behind me. <laughs> As it should Man. be. The bad boy of TTRPGs takes no prisoners. Nope. <laughs> That's Really, really good stuff. But though, really, Steve, one of the things that I love the most is uh, you got some acting chops. <laughs> Thank you. I don't, I don't know that I do, but sure. Well, I'm just saying. I witnessed you, it live. You, 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 you game master for a few decades, and you know you you have to be a, a bit of a ham. So <laughs> you pick up an emotion or two. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, uh, in addition to just uh, being a wonderful story, uh, thank you to everybody um, who was watching and engaging. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Um, it was uh, a lot of fun having conversation, but, you know, super kudos to our patrons. Um, thank you so much for yeah. joining us, and for hanging out. And, and uh, you know, some of you for years now have been hanging out with us over on the Patreon. And, uh, yeah. you know, we enjoy and every last minute of it. We got to say that, you know, it's been it's been a weird few years for all of us. Uh, and, uh, you know, real talk, it has it has not been easy uh, in the, the publishing business, uh, you know, with a lot of disruptions to our schedules, to our ability to produce product, to our ability to ship product, uh, to to get stuff to you. Uh, and things like the Patreon have been really valuable, uh, you know, in helping us, uh, you know, uh, keep things go, keep the lights on, you know, keep things going, keep getting you having a way to get things to you uh, and uh, to be able to keep doing what we do. So we really we really do appreciate your support uh, as far as that goes, uh, both here and, uh, in, you know, our regular 
online store and you know all of our events uh, and the like it really it means a lot it sure does well, yeah well the love is both ways definitely right on all right well let's all shed some tears real quick and then <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh yeah no no joke and i think one of the things that is most uh, enjoyable about the patreon is of course the connection and being able to find you know those things that people want and uh, but it is the collaboration and mm -hmm. the ability to just work side by side with people who are super fans of of the of the genre and the people and uh it's it's really it's really great to see um uh, even a small part of that is very very rewarding for me so with that being said um folks you're missing out on some great stuff if you're not a part of the patreon so you want to head over to patreon.com slash mutants a n d masterminds you know uh, sneak in there with the three bucks and uh mm -hmm. and just kind of see see how things uh go you'll be hooked in no time um you know we've got monthly dev chats we've got actual plays that you can be a part of uh we've got um you know with the dev chat i swear it never fails uh the three of you crystal steve and alex come away with a laundry list of things <laughs> that it's at true. first they're like Yo, okay here's some more work but then the, i mean like you just spark the love in all three of them i mean you can just see those wheels turning and uh and it's it's uh it's a lot of fun so get over there uh get involved and uh with that i think we are done thanks everybody thank, thank you, you everyone have a thank great rest so of your much. weekend and we'll see you Good monday night. for mutants and masterminds monday see you then Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>